to Sarasota O's fans, and today you are in for a treat. Scheduled to take them out today are two of the Orioles' young prospects. Kevin Gosman, he'll make the start, his first in Grapefruit League play. And Dylan Bundy will follow suit, giving the Orioles fans a glimpse of what part of the future rotation could look like. on Masson on a sunny but cool Florida afternoon as the Tampa Bay Rays come to town to take on your Baltimore Orioles. And hi everyone, I'm Jim Hunter. Thanks so much for joining us. And of course, spring training games are all about the players getting ready for opening day on April 2nd. So for the regulars, that means getting their work in. For the players trying to force their way out to the roster, that means impressing. And for the injured players trying to make a comeback, these games are critical to see if they're back where they need to be. And of course, at the top of that list is Brian Roberts. For the past three years, he has not played very regularly, but he is back in camp and he is playing with the regulars and he is playing less. Like a regular. Look at his games played seven. He's batting a crisp 400. Couple of doubles, a home run, one RBI. And those numbers on the bottom are important. How is Brian defensively bouncing back from his ailments? No errors so far in 24 chances. And he's been a part of three double plays. And Mike Bordick with us today. And Mike, good to have you back. You've been down here with Brian Roberts the entire time. You've seen him. Now, what have you seen? And more importantly, what should we be seeing from Mike at this stage in camp? Well, I'll tell you what, the most important thing is a healthy Brian Roberts. Roberts. If he can stay healthy and remain healthy through spring training and head into the season, I think the optimism is so high about what he can potentially do to help this club and get them back into the postseason. So I'll tell you what, first of all, though, the healthy Brian Roberts, second of all, just the fact that he feels good about himself being a part of this Orioles ball club. The last couple years, there's a look at Brian right there, last couple of years, just due to injury, kind of kept his distance away from the team. Well, he was the first guy in camp this year. He's taken the extra batting practice, the ground balls with the team so he feels like he is now part, back to being part of the Baltimore Orioles which I think is the most important thing yeah I agree I, I think the best thing we could be saying about Brian Roberts right now he's just like any other player there is nothing different about how he's going about it well that's right and that's a hurdle that he had to overcome mentally by himself and he did that that's why he's settled in now every day out there taking ground balls he has great life great energy doing his work he's into the batting cage getting his extra work done he is what we expected and that's a veteran leader Brian Roberts on the field now for the Baltimore Orioles there is I'll tell you what I talked to each player Nick Markakis included about what it means to have Brian Roberts back here as a part of the Baltimore Orioles and playing second base and their eyes just light up say this is huge here's the veteran leadership in the middle of the diamond we know how important the backbone of this team is with Matt Wieters J.J. Hardy and Adam Jones in the center you add a healthy Brian Roberts up the middle and this is a dynamic team it really is. And the other area where this is very important, that's in the front office where Dan Duquette and his staff and Buck Showalter and his staff in those meetings, we're getting down very soon to more cuts. So if Brian Roberts can play and they know he's on the team, that helps with the events roster makeup. Well, the Orioles and Tampa Bay Rays today from Sarasota. We're coming back to Ed Smith Stadium. Lineups at first pitch are next.
So back here in Sarasota, it is still a nice day, a lot cooler than the regulars are accustomed to, but a nice day for baseball here at Ed Smith Stadium. And Kevin Gosman on the mound today. It's his fifth appearance, but it's first start. And here's what he sent out on Twitter today. So excited to be making my first spring training start. Lego Orioles. <laughs> I'm still looking for Twitter abbreviations. That means let's go. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the race lineup. Desmond Jennings, Kelly Johnson, Evan Longoria batting third. Last season, 17 home runs and 55 RBIs in injury shortened season. Our old friend Luke Scott, then you know Escobar, Matt Joyce, James Loney, Ryan Roberts, and Jose Lobaton will catch at that night. And here's today's scouting report for Kevin Gaussman, plus pitches for sure. He has two major league quality pitches, a fastball that he can throw in the mid to high 90s with great darting, sinking life, and he has a plus changeup to go along with that. Funky but clean. I'm not talking about his smell or anything. I'm talking about his delivery. It is pure. Throws across his body a little bit, but a great loose live arm, and it's as fluid as you're going to see. And he's got a nice mound presence for a young pitcher, just 22 years old. I think that experience at LSU has certainly helped him. But you're going to see a very poised young man up there, and nothing really rattles his boat out there on the mound. Now, that is a scouting report from a guy who has spent the entire spring in the club. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, how about Kevin Gosman, just 22 years old, and not only pitching in his first major league camp, he is impressive. And as you can see, we have a nice crowd here at Ed Smith Stadium. Uh, his opening day is creeping closer now. It is under three weeks until the opener at Tampa on April the 2nd. So the right-hander getting set to work on Desmond Jennings, who will play in center field for the race this year, and the pitch just misses outside, and it's 1-0. Was B.J. Upton left the race, signed that huge free agent contract with Atlanta, so Jennings, who came through their system, now takes over in center field. And again, missing outside and 2-0. and yeah, A little bit of pressure on Jennings, of course, but he is having a fine spring, hitting 350 right now to this point. So really taking the bull by the horns and taking the job over. Osmond again down and away, ball three. You can see he works very quickly, fluid in his delivery. So far in the spring, no one loss record, a 2.35 ERA, and that's over but low ball four, and a four-pitch walk. So... Who kept it down, but all four missed and a leadoff walk. Let's take a look at the Orioles defense this afternoon. Jason Preedy in left field, Nate McClouth in center, Jackson over in right field, Wilson Betterman at third, Hardy and Roberts up the middle, Chris Davis at first base, and Matt Wieters doing the catching. Here's Kelly Johnson. He is new to the race. Second baseman by trade, but he's playing in left field. Crosman deals again. It's over but low. And 1 0. So five pitches, five out of the strike zone for Kevin Gosman. Yeah, maybe a little nerves here. Uh, first start for Kevin Gosman this spring. So uh, trying to settle himself down, but he is working the bottom of the zone, which is a good, good sign. And a toss to first to Tace Jennings, who will steal. He has five stolen bases already in spring training. That is a ton of steals when you don't play every day. Well, the Rays are uh, pushing the envelope here in spring training, showing what they're all about. And I think they're going to take it right in the season. 21 stolen bases this year to lead the Grapefruit League. There's a strike at the knees as Johnson took all the way. There's Kelly Johnson started with Atlanta. Then he went to Arizona. Arizona traded him to Toronto. Became a free agent. Blue Jays, of course, made all the changes after last year, and he stayed in the division in Tampa Bay. 1-1 one, one is right there for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. Well, Kelly Johnson was a double play partner with uh, Yunel Escobar, who is now mm -hmm. part of Tampa Bay, so very familiar with each other up the middle. But I think uh, one thing that the Rays do, they love to have versatile players, and that's why you're seeing Kelly Johnson out in left field today. And the one two is swept foul off the right field side. Of course, Kevin Gausman out of LSU, but he's from Centennial, Colorado. So he left the Rocky Mountain region of the United States and went down to Louisiana to play in college. Amazing. Drafted just last June. Brought along slowly. Buck Showalter getting a good look at him this spring as he makes his fifth appearance for the Birds. Another one two pitch to Kelly Johnson. And up and in. Well, I'll tell you what, young pitchers that come in the camp, much like Dylan Bundy did last year, 
Really just so the big league staff can see what they're all about. Certainly they've seen tapes of them pitch, but how they handled themselves live in the, in the heat of competition. Kevin Gosman's done nothing but impress and has put himself in a spot not just to show what he can do, but to win a spot actually in the big league club. I mean, I think that's how well he's been pitching this spring. And that would be saying something because of the balance and the depth in this camp. The three and two Jennings likely will go and he does not. <laughs> so all those steals on the spring and Joe Madden has him stay at first base. Well, you know what they do early on in spring games because the wind is always blowing around down here in Sarasota. They they really soak the fields early so they'll stay as damp as they possibly can throughout the ball game because they dry out so quickly. So that might be a reason why he's not taking off that first base. A little late on the swing on that fastball and Johnson fouls it off. Now if you're Kevin Gosman, you have to have the mentality that you're trying to make this team, right? I mean he's not pitching to pitch a buoy even though he may end up there. Well, I, I think initially he comes in with uh, expectations just to show everybody what he's got. But I, I think after, you know, the first couple weeks, we realize he might have a shot at making this ball club. Jennings took off and the pitch down low. So back to back walks, two on with none out. Well, one thing Buck Showalter has done in the spring training is spread the wealth, if you will, dividing it up. Here are the starters through the spring training games. Jake Arietta leads the team as he has three starts. And then you see the players with two starts. Wei Yin Chen, Jason Hamill, Jair Jurgens, Brian Mattis, who was great last night, and Chris Tillman. And one start each for those others, including Gosman making his first start today. So 11 different starters so far in the games. And that's what spring training is all about. Weeder's out to talk to Gosman, who misses again and falls behind Longoria 1-0. Well, there's nobody better than to go out and settle a pitcher down the mat. Weeders, he's handled so many pitchers. Obviously, we talked about how many pitchers have thrown just in this spring training, but even last year and throughout the course of his young career. So probably the right words just to settle Kevin down a little bit, get back on track, and get a ground ball. Two on and none out. There's a strike as Longoria lays off. Of course, Kevin Gosman had no way of controlling this or probably didn't even think about it, but Joe Madden, the Rays manager is doing him a favor today. He has several regulars in this lineup today for a road game. There's a bouncer slowly hit to Hardy. J.J. to second out there. Brian no throw back to first. So the middle runner is retired. Tampa Bay runners on the corners now with one down. It's a real good pitch. Looked like it was moving away. And a slow ground ball, a weak ground ball to Hardy. Yeah, just enough movement. Kevin Gosman's fastball. It's going to sink or it's going to tail away from hitters, and there's always life on it right there, inducing a nice ground ball. Unfortunately, just too slow to turn that double play. And here is Luke Scott, who just turned to the Orioles bench and kind of tipped his helmet to him. Had a nice chat with Luke by the batting cage. He feels very comfortable. He says he's healthy and is really enjoying his time in Tampa Bay, although kind of got the impression he misses the Orioles. Well, I'm sure he. Uh, was really happy for what had happened last year for the Orioles after you know Luke Scott being here and seeing the trials and tribulations that they had had to go, go through for so many years and then for good things to happen to him I'm sure he put a smile on his face. Jennings at third Longoria at first one down. Off speed pitch on the outside corner and take it for a strike. So there's Weeders. He falls behind Scott. Young man on the mound. You may be looking fastball. Change it. Exactly. And I mean, a tribute to Kevin as well because he has the confidence to be able to throw that pitch and not fall behind, especially here in this first inning where he has had trouble throwing, throwing some strikes. That fastball misses down and in and two and one. So two walks in the first inning for Gosman. He had walked a total of only three coming into today. And as Buck Showalter gives the 22 year old the baseball here. Two and one with one down. And foul may have gotten a piece of his foot rolling up towards Chris Davis. Number 75 in spring. 11 balls, nine strikes early. But these innings for pitchers like Kevin Gosman, who are quite obviously not only part of the future, the not too distant future, these innings in these games are so important for their development. 
Well, they sure are. I mean, how many times you get a chance to face sitters like Luke Scott, and Evan Longoria, and you know all the big league guys that are down here in spring training? It's a great experience, and you get to uh, show what kind of stuff you have to see if you can get guys out. And a big strikeout, an off-speed pitch, and Luke couldn't reach it. Kevin Gosman getting a big strikeout and two men down. Well, this is the changeup that he features. And look at that tilt at the end. Great late depth. It's a swing and a miss on a quality big league hitter. And here's Kevin Mike in his first four appearances. All four appearances, by the way, on the road. It's his first start here. And you've seen his last two appearances, no runs allowed. He was brilliant last Saturday night against the Red Sox at Fort Myers. Just two hits, three strikeouts, and three scoreless innings. And the Red Sox lineup isn't that uh, easy to go through either. So a lot of tests for Kevin Gosman, and he has certainly risen to the challenge here. You know Escobar now, high fastball, 1-0. You know Escobar, uh, great pickup, obviously, for Tampa Bay to solidify their defense. Last year, defense was the trouble spot. They led the league in errors, you know, with such a dominant pitching staff, so... They look to tighten it up up the middle with Escobar and Kelly Johnson. Strike on the inside corner. Escobar in disagreement with the call. Desmond Jennings is at third. He walked leading off and Evan Longoria at first after a fielder's choice. Chatting with Chris Davis. Kevin Gosman trying to work out of a jam. And that one fouled back and ran in. On Yunel Escobar. Escobar chatting with John Hirschbeck, the home plate umpire. It looks like he may have swung at that pitch because of the prior call. He thought that was ball two and it was in the same area. And he couldn't even get the barrel on the ball. Which John Hirschbeck's been around a long time. A one and two on Escobar. And a bouncer to J.J. Hardy. J.J. goes to Brian Roberts for the force. Longoria's out. And Gosman with a very good job getting out of the jam. Two walks and two left. Tampa Bay doesn't score. Bottom of the first. Here come the birds. No score as we go to the bottom of the first. Real good crowd at Ed Smith Stadium. Here's the Orioles starting lineup for today. Brian Roberts, Nolan Reimold, and Nate McLeod with Matt Wieters in the cleanup spot. Matt, of course, last year, big numbers, 23 home runs, 83 ribbies. Davis Hardy and Bedevy the third today. Connor Jackson in right. Jason Crichton is in left. Take a look at the scouting report for Jeff Neiman this afternoon. Fighting for that fifth spot. It's been a tough competition all the way here. But uh, they just sent Chris Archer out. He was optioned to AAA recently, so that may make this fifth spot open for Jeff Neiman. It's a bounce-back year for him. He was injured, missed a lot of last year. So looking to stay healthy and get regain his confidence, and he does have good stuff. Low to mid, 90-mile-an-hour fastball, hard spiking curve to go along with it. Brian Roberts' first ball swing. He pops it up, foul down the left field line. Now the wind takes it back fair, and Escobar is there to make the grab and one away. Take a look at Jeff Neiman. Last season, just eight starts. That two, three, 
Two wins, three losses, record 3.08 earned run average, only 38 innings pitched. So certainly a bounce back year for him. He is healthy right now. He took a line drive off the leg, broke his fibula, missed. He was put on the 60 day DL when he came back. Then he had arm problems. So that year, just put that away, get back into being healthy and pitching what he's capable of doing. Nolan Reimold takes strike one. Nolan is DHing again. His throwing shoulder is improving. And he is hoping to be back defensively in the lineup very soon, hopefully over the weekend. Neiman deals, and it's a little high in one and one. But when you watch Nolan at the plate, in particular during his batting practice group, he is doing everything that he would need to do to be able to compete. That shoulder, the, the tight shoulder, the sore shoulder, hasn't bothered him at all at the plate. One one is pull foul, off speed pitch, and Rymel out in front. Well, the concern with Nolan Reimold is just being able to build that strength back, and he has been able to do that on a gradual basis. I would venture to say that he wouldn't say he's 100 percent, but I think he could play at 80, 85 percent with that type of injury, and he's every day trying to uh, rehab it back to full strength. So he's excited to be healthy and at least be getting some at bats here in spring training, and he's certainly looking forward to playing some defense on a more consistent basis as well. And he adds a dimension to this lineup, Mike, that you just can't teach. He is a legitimate power threat every time he steps into the batter's box. 2-2 is pulled deep down the left field line. That is hooking, and it is foul. Almost right on cue there, Jim. Jim Presley, his hitting coach, says he has that combination of the tremendous physical ability, and he's as strong or stronger than anyone in the lineup. So you put that together, and that's why you get the... Well, the way he started off last year, we thought that was the Nolan Reimholt that we had heard about and been hoping for. And unfortunately, you know, got plagued with that injury bug, but it's there. He is very talented and just a great athlete. He gets down the first baseline right, just as fast as anybody in the league. In fact, last year with Brian Roberts not available for opening day, Nolan Reimold was in the leadoff spots. First couple of weeks of the season before the injury in Chicago, he batted leadoff and had five home runs in that leadoff spot. Neiman deals 2 2, swung out and missed. He got a good pitch down and in. And the first strikeout, two men down. And great location with that fastball right there. Here's a look at the Rays defense this afternoon. Johnson in left, Jennings in center, Joyce over in right, Escobar and Roberts up the middle, Longoria and Loney. At first base and Labaton doing the catching. A lot of changes for the Tampa Bay Rays this year. James Loney over at first base, Chris Escobar and Kelly Johnson typically would be up the middle. Ryan Roberts playing second base today, but a healthy Evan Longoria back in the lineup. They certainly missed him out there defensively and offensively as he missed over 80 games last year for the Rays. Jeff Neiman now 30 years old. And he misses outside 2-0 on Nate McLeod. Nate playing in center field. There's Adam Jones still with the American team in the World Baseball Classic, and they have a huge game coming up tonight. 2-0 pitches high, ball three. The American squad will play the Dominican Republic 7 o'clock. You can watch that game on the MLB Network and tune in and watch Adam Jones. He is one of the spark plugs of that American lineup. Between Adam and David Wright, of course, David Wright has, has been brilliant. Here's the 3 0, it's on the corner and a strike. So, Oriole fans should enjoy watching Adam Jones on the MLB network tonight. That game is at 7 o'clock, and that's a winner's bracket game. It's double elimination this round, and a win guarantees Team USA would be in the finals in San Francisco. As Nate McLeod takes a two out walk. Yeah, Adam Jones, it seems like every time he gets a hit, USA team. It's a big hit. Driving in a run. A lot of excitement there. Great experience for Adam Jones as well. Matt Weeders in the cleanup spot. Matt is having a real good spring. See his numbers from last year 23 home runs, 83 ribbies. He is 8 for 17 in his seven games. Up there from the left side. And there's a strike at the knees on one. Now, how about Joe Madden? Here it is a spring training game. Weeders is at the plate. And he's employing his regular season shift against Matt Weeders so his defense can get accustomed to it. They better get used to it because Madden, uh, more than any other manager in the game today, shifts his defense 
and just plays to the tendencies, and it has certainly worked out for him. I think their success ratio is really high when he does uh, move his players around, fill up those holes. And the cloth on with two men down. And even misses inside. The wind has shifted since batting practice. The Orioles hit between 10 and 11. And the wind at the time, and now it shifts back. You see the American flag, it's blowing towards right center field. And that's where it was blowing during batting practice. And that enabled Weeders, batting from the left side, to put on an absolute show in his BP group. McLeod goes, pitches low, Lobaton no throws, and bounced. And he scooped it up. So McLeod, with his first steal of the spring, gets the second with two down. Great jump right there from Nate McLeod. Uh, time Neiman really well. Wayne Kirby obviously given times. He says you can go ahead and take that bag, and he sure did. And the count to three and one on Weeders. Good hitters count. And a foul back. The Weeders during the BP beyond the right field fence. I don't know if they call it pickup truck road, but all the guys who have pickup trucks they tend to park in the same spot. And there you see the pickup trucks out there. And Jim Presley asked Weeders, what are you doing? Because I'm trying to hit one of the trucks. <laughs> and he hit one over the trucks. That's how far he hit. Some BP, they entertain themselves. And the 3-2 is a little low and a good eye. Ball four. Each starter with two walks in the first. Gosman walked the first two. Neiman has walked the last two. So the Birds have two on with two down. A lot of pressure here in the first inning on both pitchers. Gosman never will work himself out of that jam after... Two, two quick walks to get the outs and no run scored. Well, here Neiman finds himself in that same position. Runners in scoring position. Two outs. See if he can make the pitch to get him out of this jam here. Well, Chris Davis will bat. Runners on first and second. And a foul slicing down the line. That'll just make its way back to the stands. And Chris lost the bat. Broken back. Chris Davis playing at first base. He will be the everyday first baseman this year. And he has worked very hard, as you well know, working with him with Bobby Dickerson. And he looks like a different player. He really does. I'll tell you what, he has put the time in. And if not for Bobby Dickerson to really kind of push him along and tell him, this is what you need to do to become a better first baseman and help your, you know, infielders out. Uh, they've been out there for early work. They were at the beginning of the year before the games really kicked in every day out there for early work, helping Chris Davis out. And now he has a program that he follows if he stays back when the team's on the road. So great improvements from Chris Davis. We know how athletic he is. And he has shown that this year already in spring training with some tremendous diving plays. He's got that strong arm. <laughs> Down goes another bat. So a little frustration there. So two swings, two foul balls, two broken bats. Mr. Markakis with Buck Showalter. He'll return back to Baltimore for a day to see the spine specialist at Johns Hopkins. Thought I might see him on the plane flying down yesterday, but he slept in a little bit, took a little later flight. Well, two on and two down. We're in the first. Neiman trying to get out of a jam. 0 and 2 on Davis. And then another foul ball. Running that fastball in there underneath uh, Chris Davis's hands. Better be careful. He makes a mistake in there. Chris Davis has been known to get some really far balls. As a matter of fact, we were watching some highlights of him earlier today when he hit that one in Tropicana that went out in center field up on the roof. Yeah, the roof of the restaurant in straightaway center field for a 1 0 win. Another 0 2 pitch from Neiman. Another Davis lays off. Chris last year. A career high 33 home runs that led the Orioles. He had career high 85 RBIs that led the Orioles. And he also led the Orioles in earned run average. Well, he did. That's the old school stuff right there. That's, <laughs> zero, zero, that's a baseball zero. player. And a strike called on the inside corner as it had a little movement. It got the edge, and Hirschbeck rings him up. Two walks, two left. We're through one at Ed Smith Stadium. No score.
Well, don't forget about Tag Day. It's returning to Oriole Park on Saturday, March 23rd, 9 a.m. until noon. You can stop by the ballpark to see which seats are available for purchase for partial season plans for the upcoming season. Plus, the 2012 highlight film, The Buckle Up Birds and Underdog Story, will be playing on the center field video board to get you ready for the season. So order your partial season plans now, Orioles.com, or check out the available seats in person. Tag Day coming up Saturday, March 23rd from 9 until noon. And that is always a very popular day, and you get to literally sit in the seats that you may purchase, see the view, and if you like it, great. If not, you go sit somewhere else. They have all the seats tagged that are available. Matt Joyce leads off against Gosman. And a good looking breaking ball to swing and a miss. Oh, sure was. That's his third best pitch right there, the slider. And uh, something that he's been working on. He can actually get by with his fastball and his changeup. But if he can add that slider into the mix, this kid is going to be something special. Joyce late on the swing, but he fouls it off. Let's take a look at uh, Kevin's delivery here. Kind of tough to tell from the side, but his front foot is off to the side, so he's cross firing. Take a look at it here. So it's a, there's some deception that hitters can't really pick that up as easily. It's not a true clean delivery, so that cross firing action adds the deception to go along with a 97 mile an hour moving fastball. Makes it uh, really tough on opposing hitters. And the one two is hit slowly towards first. Davis gets to it, and the flip to Gosman safe as the foot was off the bat. Joyce hustled. Gosman got there, but the throw to the opposite side of the bag, and he didn't get his foot down. So Wilkie calls him safe. Take a look at it here. Nice play by Chris Davis coming in. Yeah. I think the problem is he stepped, maybe missed the bag. It's when he went back after it the second time. Right there, it led Tim Wilkie to believe that he had missed it the first time. Maybe if he had just kept running, sometimes you have to be a good actor out there. I'm sure he'll figure that out as you go. But he did get to the base in time, but you certainly have to find the base to record that out. It'll go as an infield hit. Here's James Loney. And a swing and a foul back. Loney, the former Dodger. Now with Tampa Bay, as he was traded to the Red Sox last year, he was one of the players leaving the Dodgers in that huge Boston LA trade and he signed a free agent contract in Tampa Bay. Maloney, another one of those players that's kind of looking for a bounce back year. Nice snap throw by Matt Waiters. What the Orioles did an outstanding job last year of controlling the running game with the help of the pitchers being quicker to the plate. But Matt Weeder's obviously the gold glove catcher. And this is where it stems from right here. You show that you're going to back pick behind guys. It really keeps guys at bay. They're going to be less aggressive. And this Tampa Bay team has shown that they're going to try to run. So good to show them what they're going to be doing here. Bouncer to Davis to Hardy one back to first and a double play with Gosman covering at that time made sure he get his foot in the bag. And two men down. Yes, he did. Very tough play by Kevin Gossman to be able to get back to the base in time to handle this throw from the shortstop, J.J. Hardy. But look at Chris Davis creating a lane on the inside. J.J. Hardy, obviously, the quick turn, quick feet. Kevin Gossman there in time. Nice 3 6 1 double play. Four balls have been put in play against Gossman. All four have been hit on the ground, and all four have been hit weakly on the ground. Ryan Roberts now. He'll look over a pitch low, 1 0. Here he is, Bordy. Tatman. Hey, yeah. Breaking ball for a strike. Good pitch. Breaking down in the outside corner. As Gosman last year did pitch at Aberdeen, did pitch at Frederick. Bouncer to third, played there by Betteby. And throw across in time in the inning end. Infield single to begin up, but the double play helped out with for an inning and a half. Owes a raise, no score in Sarasota.
J.J. Hardy leads off for the Orioles. We go to the second, no score, and Mike and I were battering around. Well, what do you think the probable opening day lineup would look like? Is this a lineup that you think Buck Showalter might submit on opening night? I think so. Um, take a look, Nate McLeod, to prove last year that he could be a quality leadoff guy. Brian Roberts, obviously, his whole career has been a leadoff hitter, but versatility being a switch hitter would make him an ideal candidate for being the number two hitter. Nick Markakis, of course, if he's healthy, probably the best three-hole hitter, but he also showed that he could be a great number one hitter, and Adam Jones, boy, what a great number four hole hitter, Weeders, Davis, J.J. Hardy, Reimhold, Machado. That's, I think, the way it's going to play out if everybody's healthy. How about that lower third of a lineup? Hardy, Reimhold, and Machado batting 7, 8, and 9 in our Mike Bordick approved projected lineup. <laughs> Neiman against Hardy. Well, they might be upset if they see that. <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine the production right there if those guys are healthy and J.J. Hardy gets back on track? I mean, his numbers from last year, 22 home runs. Obviously, the average down a little bit. And, you know, he'd obviously like to hit a little bit higher than that. But uh, great power potential as J.J. Hardy steps up to the plate here. But it could be a real uh, powerful lineup, top to bottom. Swings at the breaking ball and pops it up. Ryan Roberts backing up. Second baseman is there, and he has it for the out. Run away in the Orioles' second. Well, of course, on opening day in Tampa, David Price will be on the mound for Tampa Bay, so it is possible that possibly Nate McLeod doesn't start that day with the tough lefty on the mound. Maybe Nolan Reimold is not the aging. He's in the outfield, and maybe somebody who we don't even know if is on the team yet might be that other right-handed bat. That's right. You know, I know all last year we talked about the beauty of competition in spring training and how much every guy in camp really had to step up, especially with the pitching staff last year. Well, much of the same this year, and not just with the pitching, but the position players as well. There are guys fighting for that last one or two spots on this Orioles uh, offense, and, and uh, guys have really stepped up. Connor Jackson... You know, Jason Preeties has a nice spring. Uh, Steve, Steve Pierce. Pierce. You know, Lou Ford. I mean, so many guys. Ryan Flaherty, once again, having another super spring. So a lot of healthy competition amongst themselves. Cued towards third. Tough play for Longoria. Bare hands. Won't even throw. Betamete is on with a huge swinging bunt single. Of course, Betamete is in battle for the spot as well, although his spot is a little more secure. We'll take a look at the swing here. A little off-speed pitch. Wilson gets out in front, but boy, there's beauty. That's a line drive in the books right off the end of the bat. Just slow enough where Gold Glover, Evan Longoria can't make a play on. You know, if you look at the bench, Taylor Teagarden's there. Somebody has to back up Weeders. Taylor does a great job. Alexi Casilla will be on the team. They brought him in to be the backup second baseman for Brian if Brian was healthy. And so far, so good as Connor Jackson comes up. Then you have Wilson Betemi, who has a contract that still has this year plus an option. So technically that leaves one spot on the bench, and that's with us not knowing if Buck Showalter already has in mind the player he wants in that position. But somewhere in there, and if Betemi's on the team, he could be this guy. But somebody has to be the backup first baseman. We know Casilla can back up at second. Somebody's got a backup Hardy. Casilla can play short as well. Ryan Flaherty could play first, second, short, and third, and the outfield. Right. Well, Ryan Flaherty is that player, although it's another lefty bat. Defensively, he's your utility versatility guy. Steve Pierce could play first, he could play the outfield, and he's a right handed option. So there are a lot of decisions to be made, and we really have no idea of knowing how many, if any, spots are available. Right. Just speculating on how the roster appears to be shaping up. Exactly. A and if everyone's healthy for opening day. That's the other X factor in this. 0-2 on Connor Jackson, who's having a good spring, batting 370. Another breaking ball at the end of the bat popped up to Ryan Roberts. And he's got it for the out and two men down. Well, both pitchers here in the early going able to keep hitters off balance. Not too many guys able to square balls up, both off Gossman and Neiman. There's Jeff Neiman, Tampa Bay's first-round pick back in 2004. He was the fourth overall pick in that draft just as Kevin Gosman was for the Orioles in last year's draft, fourth overall. The difference though, Neiman has 40 major league wins, and Gosman's trying to get to the big leagues. Yeah, Neiman, uh, you know, four-plus years in the major leagues, so, you know, kind of an established major league pitcher. 
but unfortunately due to injury last year, now he finds himself competing again for a spot in the rotation. Lobaton with the throw behind Betamid who got back as Jason Pridey took strike one. Betamid held there by Loney. And then outside one and one. And Pridey has seven base hits. He also has a couple of home runs. He's trying to factor in as a backup outfielder. He is 29 years old. Originally was drafted by Tampa Bay. He was a second round pick of the Rays in 2002. Shows Buck takes down and in, nearly hit him. Friday last year in the Phillies organization played in only nine games in the big leagues. And the rest of the year, Triple A. But the year before that, he played 101 games in the majors with the Mets. Well, he's got a sweet swing, and it stood out here in camp. I mean, Everybody talks about how soft his front side is and just a real true, you know, one of those swings that you don't teach, just a natural, effortless swing. You saw Lobaton and Longoria not give up on that ball because of the way the wind is blowing. That ball was well back in the stands, and then it landed right in the middle of the Tampa Bay dugout. A couple of more feet, they would have had a chance. Well, the elements always come into play here in spring training. The wind has been nonstop and it has been a little cooler. And what that does is obviously, like you said, you can't give up on pop-ups, but it also dries your hands out. So a lot of the throwing errors you may see are just because guys don't have a good grip on the ball. Two and two count. Breaking ball, he got a piece. Neiman really working on that off-speed pitch today. And you're at that point in camp for the starters where they begin to select a pitch. I think I need to work on this today. And to me, it looks like it's the off-speed pitch. It's getting a lot of swings, fooled hitters with the swings. Yeah, it does. You're right. This is the time. I think early on in camp, they try to establish their fastball, work on their location with it. And then as the games progress, certainly have to start mixing in your off-speed pitches. Escobar fields the slow ground ball. He'll have no play. Jason Pridey hustling down the line as an infield hit. Orioles with two infield hits in the inning have two on with two out. So that time the the pitch worked against Neiman. Friday was able to make contact, not very good contact, but it was where he put it. That's right, another one right off the end of the bat for a base hit. Here's Brian Roberts for his second at bat. Brian popped up to the shortstop Escobar's first at bat. And takes a strike. Brian has hits in five of the seven games in which he has played, including a couple of multi hit games. He's had a three hit game as well. Outside, one and one. I think Brian. Uh... One of the big factors, obviously, there were a lot of things coming into spring training for Brian Roberts that he felt like he had to work on. But one was just to be more consistent with the swing from both sides of the plate. So he just spent hours and hours in the cage taking extra batting practice. And I really think he feels confident both si both sides of the plate with his approach. You know, he's soft on the front side. He's able to use his hands. He's covering, you know, the whole field, which is a typical Brian Roberts. Wherever it's pitched, he's going to put it hard in play. So I think he feels really good about that part of his game right now. One one a tapper right back to Neiman. Yep, he's six foot nine. He just all the height, grabs that ball, and he gets Roberts to retire the side. Two hits and two left, which are two. O's and Rays, no score in spring three.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Sarasota. There's so much to see and do in Sarasota on Florida's Gulf Coast. Go beyond the stadium to the number one beach in the USA. Visit numberonebeach.com. This is lovely. Siesta Key. Mike Porter takes his fishing pole out there. Tries to catch dinner. How's that going? If I went to that beach, I wouldn't be fishing. That's for sure. <laughs> Here's Jose Lopatone leading off against Kevin Gosman, who misses down and in. Kevin in his third inning of work. Lopatone, veteran backup catcher up there from the left side. Going in his 11th game in the spring. Breaking ball bends in there for a strike. The contrast in Gosman's repertoire, that was a 77 mile an hour off speed pitch, and he can reach 98 when he has his good fastball. Here's a pitch that hits the inside corner, another off speed pitch. Reader showing Gosman some confidence by going with the off speed pitches. Fastball just missed. So he goes 77, then 80, then comes in with the fastball. All right, 95, 96 with that fastball right there. So keeping the hitter off balance and guessing. If he feels like he's got to catch up with that fastball, that off speed pitch becomes that much more uh, devastating. Gosman pitched in two games for Aberdeen, a total of six innings, did not give up a run, and then he appeared in three games for Frederick. And a called strike three. Badly fooled by that pitch by Lobaton as he saw those off speed pitches to begin it. Well, this is definitely an out pitch. Check out the location here on this 93 mile an hour fastball. Late moving action. It's Matt Reader's glove in perfect spot, doesn't have to move it. That pitch can be unhittable. Certainly was right there for Robitaille. Desmond Jennings for his second at bat shows bunt and does bunt it foul. Jennings drew a walk leading off the game on four pitches. Just a little bit outside, one and one. Ground is foul. You see the wind up, and Mike showed you the side delivery of Gosman before. And when you look at him from behind home plate, looking at him, Buck Showalter pointed this out before the game. He reminds you of Kevin Apier. You face Kevin Apier. Yeah. Just not as violent, but you see the mannerisms, and Buck is right on the money with that. When you, when you watch Gosman in his follow through, he does have the similar follow through that Apier had. The yeah. only thing is with Apier, he had a much more violent delivery with his shoulder. Yeah, he sure did. There were a lot of arms and legs with Apier, but he comes across his body, so you don't pick the ball up until the very end, and that arm action is so quick and smooth that. That ball's on you. When you feel like you have to catch up to a 95, 96 mile an hour moving fastball, and he drops that devastating change up. And when he develops that slider even more than he has, you know, this kid is going to be awesome. He's already awesome. He's having a fabulous spring. But it just shows you how hard it is for hitters to pick up and make solid contact on these pitches. One, two is down and in. Jennings having a hard time putting the ball in play, but Gosman can't put him away. Gosman's fifth appearance in the spring. 2 tools of loop towards Hardy. JJ backs up and he grabs it for the out. Another one that ran in on him and two down here in the third inning. The Orioles 2013 early bird promotion schedule has been announced and now's the time to get your tickets to some of the most popular games during the season. Don't miss the returning fan favorites, t-shirt nights, fireworks nights, and more. Uh, plus, get your tickets now for the fun promotions. How about Beach Towels Night presented by Visit Sarasota County or Orioles Batting Practice Caps presented by DAP. So plan your Birdland Summer, 888-848-BIRD, or go online at Orioles.com. 
And Gosman working here in the third, about to throw his 51st pitch. And this is down and in to Kelly Johnson, 2 0. Faced the minimum three batters in the second. Lead off hit, then a double play. That one's ripped foul. Look out. Well, that's the hardest hit ball to this point of Kevin Gosman. I'll tell you what's most impressive, and, I, and I'm sure Buck Joe Walter will allude to this after Gosman's performance, is the fact that so he walks the first two hitters of the ball game, and now he's gotten every hitter out in a row. So uh, just the way he can settle himself down and get himself back on track without even any effort. I mean, he hasn't shown any kind of disappointment in what he's been doing. He's confident. Just keeps trying to pound that strike zone. And when he does, he has such great movement on his ball that nobody can really square it up. Misses with the breaking ball. There's his third walk. This one comes with two down. Not a bad pitch right there either. Another off-speed pitch right at the bottom of the zone. Just didn't get that call. And I think when umpires see what Kevin Gosman's about and how he can really command all of his pitches, he'll start getting those calls more consistently. For the Longoria now. Fastball misses outside. Now Kevin Gosman is in camp as he faces Longoria here who bounced into the fielder's choice his first at bat. But he's a non-roster player. He's he was signed to a minor league deal after the draft last year. And the 1-0 is hit to the gap in left center field. They were playing him the other way. That one gets down. It goes all the way to the wall. Kelly Johnson hits the third. He'll be set. He's coming towards the plate. And there's a two-out RBI double for Evan Longoria. Rays get on the board in the third. one nothing. Warriors outfield had a little bit of a shift towards right center. And Longoria gets the head out on this down fastball. Drives it in the left center field gap. Not really a terrible pitch from Gosman, but you know, that's a great hitter right there, Evan Longoria. He squares up a pitch that was in the middle of the plate, but just down in the zone. Now Gosman will leave as he has reached his pitch limit. Looked like Buck was trying to nurse him through that inning, but after the two out double, Kevin Gosman will head to the bench. And Mike Belfiore, who has been optioned out but brought back for today, Belfiore to take over in the third. Kevin Gosman goes two and two thirds, charged with one earned run. He did walk three, and the third walk hurt him because it came with two men down, and Longoria followed with the RBI double. There's Mike Belfiore, his numbers with Bowie last year. He was outstanding in relief for the Bay Sox. The Orioles got it from Arizona for Josh Bell, and he's only 24 years old, a left hander, a bright future. He sure does. He's opened some eyes here this spring. Certainly showing what he can do. Good opportunity here against Luke Scott. So that he can get lefties out. And Luke Scott hits one deep to right center field. And that one's going to go. Luke looking for the pitch out over the plate. And he jumped on it. His second spring home run. Tampa Bay now with a 3-0 lead. There's 
Orioles Oriole fans familiar with that power stroke of Luke Scott. Yeah, he's ready for this fastball. Stays back on that backside. He used to call him the caveman when he was here at the Orioles. And that is a strong swing. You get it up in that air and it goes a long way. That's how he greets Belfiore. First pitch home run. You know, Escobar takes a breaking ball for a strike. On the inside corner. One of those runs charged to Gosman, the other to Belfiore. So Kevin's line done. Two runs in two and two thirds innings. Oh. Caught by the pitcher Belfiore. A line drive screaming back at him. And Belfiore grabs it. But the Rays explode for three after two men down. Mid third, three nothing ten. Three nothing Tampa Bay. Three run top of the third. Orioles will bat in the bottom of the third. A two out rally for Tampa Bay in spring training. We get a chance to visit with the players and the staff. And there he is, uh, the Orioles pitching coach Rick there. Rick, how are you? Hey Jim, how you doing? We're doing very well. Mr. Bordick alongside. And tell us what you saw from Kevin Gosman today. Looked like he had pretty good command of his off speed stuff. Well, uh, he, hadn't, he had more of a curveball today than, than the slider and. Uh, you know, obviously, you kind of bailed him out uh, of the outs he got, but uh, wasn't as sharp today as he was uh, his last outing down in Fort Myer against Boston. Now you say he had more of a, a curveball today as Nolan Reimold swings through it. Is he still trying to figure out what's better for him and as you work with him, the breaking ball versus the slider? Well, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it's kind of an unorthodox delivery, it's, it's real uh, timing oriented. And there's days where his breaking ball will be, you know, a little bit bigger than others. And uh, when we were down in Boston, uh, you know, slider was like 83 to 86, and the day it was probably in the lower 80s. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a work in progress, but uh, he is making a lot of progress with that pitch. Hey, Rick, it's Mike Bordick here. Um, you know, you have to be impressed. Obviously, I don't think Kevin Gossman had the stuff that we had seen here in, in recent starts. But after that first inning, he walks a couple guys, but just his poise. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? His demeanor on the mound, what his makeup's like? Well, Bordy, I don't think he knows any better. <laughs> to be honest with you, he came down, and you know, you can tell a young guy who's warm enough for the game. And, you know, his routine is uh, needs to be refined quite a bit, and um, yeah, he wasn't real sharp in the bullpen, but. You know, it's kind of a little bit of a shotgun approach still, and uh, but uh, you know, he's got obviously he's got a lot of talent, and a lot of athleticism, and a great competitor. Uh, all that being said, he does have great poise. What does it mean for Kevin and Dylan Bundy and Mike Belfiore and, and guys that you're really giving legitimate looks? I mean, these guys have to be thrilled with the amount of time you're throwing them out there. What this camp means for them and their development. Yeah, we talked about it in the offseason. You know, the WBC is uh, is a great opportunity to take a look at a lot of uh, young guys, and you know, there's uh, opportunities uh, for guys that uh, even that aren't young to come into camp and, and and get work. And these guys have gotten it, so you know, we're happy with that. We're happy with their progress, and 
obviously we're excited about the depth we have. Yeah, and about that depth, are you excited for trying to figure out the final 12 you're going to be able to keep? I don't have to do that. Buck has to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll be involved in those meetings, though. Something tells me. But, hey, that's a good problem to have, isn't it? It is. And, uh, you know, you're always going to have guys that uh, may be a little sore and injury here and there. Uh, and we know what we all know what we went through last year with the guys, and uh, it's uh, it's great to have these guys and uh, a lot of quality arms, and as much as anything, a lot of quality character. Well, Rick, we appreciate the visit as always. Thanks so much for a few minutes, and uh, keep it going, and uh, good luck on that cut down day. All right, appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, that's Rick there, the Orioles pitching coach. Here's a strike to Weeder, so two and two. And if that is a problem, and I don't think it is, if you have too many, <laughs> then, then what you need, that, that's what it's all about. about that, right? I mean, they, they proved that last year with the depth that they had created and able to pull guys up from AAA to help out. And even find a guy, Miguel Gonzalez. I mean, what a story last year. And, of course, he's in camp this year as an established major leaguer. And uh, a lot of great arms, though. And it's, a lot, it's been a lot of fun to watch these guys throw and compete against each other and other teams. Readers fouls it off third base side. Longoria was in the shift, so he won't be able to get there. Shift working against Tampa Bay in that time. When you're getting to the point in camp, once you get into next week, by Tuesday, there's two weeks left prior to opening day, not even in spring training. And the regulars are going to have to step up their playing time, which means the playing time that Buck Showalter has been giving a lot of these other players to show what they can do that playing time's not going to be there, so you have to take advantage of it now. 3-2 is fouled off. Lobotone can't hang on. Well, it's true, and I'll, and I'll tell you what. I even think the regulars right now, today, are starting to get a little anxious, wanting to play two, three days in a row, getting more at-bats consistently, maybe four at-bats in a ball game. And, and what it's going to do is Buck now, as he starts to create this final roster, so he'll have his everyday guys out there for seven innings, eight innings, and then slide in a guy, say like a Connor Jackson, or Lou Ford, or Steve Pearson, see how they respond to late inning pressure, and if they are going to be the guys that he's going to be able to use. And the other thing that we're beginning to see now as we get later in camp, as you play your division opponents, the starting pitchers will be sheltered somewhat. Miguel Gonzalez, his next start, won't be here. It'll be a Twin Lakes in a minor league game. Wei Yin Chen, his next start, won't be here. It'll be a Twin Lakes in a minor league game. So they'll get their innings in. They stay on schedule. They don't face the teams they're going to face a lot during the year. And it gives somebody else an opportunity to make a start before all the others have to get their work. And Chris Davis bunting into that shift, but he fouled it off. Well, I think that's a great sign right there from Chris Davis because we saw it all last year and not once did he attempt a bunt like that. But there's going to be times this season where we need Chris Davis to get on base or do something to extend a rally. And just to show that right there might keep a team a little bit more honest and create some more holes for Chris Davis. Outside, nothing in one. Chris called out on strikes his first at-bat. He is playing in his eighth game. Now, if you look at the top six hitters in the Orioles lineup today, all six expected to be on the team, and all six of those hitters had all played in exactly seven games because they don't make very many, if any, road trips. Roberts, Rymel, McLeod, Weeders, Davis, and Harden. KJ waiting on deck. One and two to count on Chris Davis. Fly ball to left field. Kelly Johnson backs up on it. Now comes in. There's the wind getting it. And Johnson stays with it for the out. Two out walk, one left. With through three in Sarasota. Tampa Bay with a 3-0 lead.
saw a youngster with a dugout club hat on the other day. Kevin Galsman is with us. He's young enough to be in the dugout club at 22 years old. Kevin, how are you? What do you think of your outing today? I'm um, good. Uh, you know, I felt pretty good about it. My secondary stuff was good. Um, you know, obviously I was kind of um, sporadic with my with my fastball and kind of uh, you know kind of all over the place. And that's uh, that's something I really need to focus on. And that's something that you know I haven't really been this spring. So got to get back to what I was doing. Well, you don't have a reference point. This is your first camp, so how are you doing that, knowing where you should be at a certain point and what you need to be working on? Uh, yeah, it is a little bit different, you know, because college you have fall ball and things like that, and uh, you know, professional ball you're just kind of thrown into spring training, and um, you know what I realize is it's, it's a lot what you did on your own while you're away and uh, getting ready for that. But um, the biggest thing is just kind of getting my arm back in shape. Well, how'd you feel? This is Mike Bordick here, Kevin. Nice. I thought you did a great job today. Um, how'd you feel about this being a start? Did you approach it any differently? I know you've done some. Uh, I've heard you speak here recently and saying it's a little bit different when you come out of the bullpen. Well, here you had to prepare for a start. Yeah, it was a little bit different. Um, you know, it reminded me of college a lot, getting back into you know what I am as a starting pitcher. So it was a little bit different. I felt like I had you know so much time, <laughs> and uh, before it was just kind of you know start throwing and get ready, and you get the next inning. So it was a little bit different. I kind of had to. You know, put my foot on the brakes a couple times. Now, you were saying you're looking to work on better consistency today. The fastball might not have been there. Jeff Neiman on the other side today, your mound opponent, he's a veteran. Looks to us like he's working on his secondary pitches today. Was Wieters just calling those because he felt you had a better chance to throw strikes? Um, you know, I don't really know. Uh, you know, I know there's, uh, you know, he, whatever he puts down, I'm going to throw. You know, he's, uh, he's Wieters, so, you know, I'm going to listen to him. <laughs> Well, he has great confidence in your secondary stuff. It seemed like every hitter's count, you threw an off-speed pitch up there for a strike or tried to induce some uh, swing and misses. And uh, you tip your hat sometimes because they laid off some tough pitches, but I thought they were quality off-speed pitches. Yeah, you know, both the ground balls that I got uh, last inning, you know, those were great pitches. And, um, you know, yeah, going forward, that's something that you have to be able to do. You have to throw your pitch in a hitter's count. And so um, that's something you have to do in professional baseball. And Joe Madden did you a favor today by the lineup he put out there because you're facing legitimate major league hitters that will be in their lineup this year. And you learned uh, the pitchers not to do, and that's a two-out walk in the third. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. I can't be, can't be doing that. And you were able to get uh, out of the other jam, but not that jam. But tell me about that. When you see these hitters and their patience at the plate as they look over close pitches, I, I guess in college you can set up hitters because they're aggressive, not so here. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, they're not going to chase your pitch. They're going to wait until they feel like they have an advantage and, you know, they see a pitch that they like. So uh, that's something that's definitely a lot different from college. College guys chase pitches all over the place, and I love it. But, uh, you know, here they don't really do that. <laughs> well, we were impressed with all of your pitches, and, and from the reports on you, uh, the quality of your fastball, you know, obviously you can run that fastball up there 97 miles an hour. But I'm just wondering, have, have they done much tinkering with your mechanics at all? And, and have they posed any questions to you about maybe changing anything? I mean, we like your delivery, and, and we think it's uh, there's some deception there, obviously, coming from across your body. Well, yeah, you know, I did my biomechanical analysis, um, you know, when I got here and also right after I got, uh, you know, after I signed the bullets. And so, um, you know, through those things, they kind of brought a couple little things to my attention. Nothing really too big, just kind of where I wanted my knee, put my back knee placement to be when I was throwing the ball and just kind of, just kind of small, minor things like that. But, you know, other than that, they've been awesome. They've really kind of just uh, been able to kind of watch me. And I think part of it is because it is my first year. So they're kind of just trying to see, you know, what I do well and what I don't do well. And, you know, uh, just kind of see me on a day to day basis. Kevin, do you feel you're a better pitcher now than you were when camp began because of all those things you just talked about? Yeah, definitely. You know, I feel like I'm getting better every day. And, uh, you know, obviously to me today, you know, my uh, my location, my command wasn't where I expected to be and where I wanted to be. But, you know, every day I try to just get better, you know, in the side work that I do with Rick and, um, you know, just things like that. But, yeah, I definitely feel like I'm better. Well, Kevin, congratulations. Uh, we appreciate the visit. Keep it going. Uh, you're doing everything you can do, and that's all you can ask for. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, that's Kevin Gosman. Fly ball to left field off the bat of Jose Lobaton. That will end the inning. So a one-out walk does an air bell Fiore. Bottom of the fourth coming up. The Birds are looking for some runs.
ballpark is sold out, but the excitement of the first weekend series in 2013 continues Saturday, April 6th, and then again Sunday, April 7th. You can celebrate your first weekend back in Birdland as the Orioles take on the Twins. So don't miss your first chance to enjoy the sights, the sounds, and the tastes of Utah Street. And welcome back, heroes, after that thrilling 2012 season. For tickets to opening weekend, Saturday and Sunday, call 888-848-BIRD or go online at Orioles.com. Lovely day, cooler than players, the fans, the locals, the visitors would like. When it's still sunny and they're playing baseball, Jeff Neiman, his fourth inning of work, has allowed two infield hits and three walks. And J.J. Hardy takes a strike. J.J. Hardy has one base hit in the spring. And that's okay because he's J.J. Hardy. He's going to be on the team <laughs> April 2nd. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But... Bouncing to third, Longoria, tough play, and look at that throw. Oh, that was a beautiful defensive play right there from Evan Longoria. And that's uh, just what Joe Madden had missed last year, his defensive play at third base. And there it was, off balance. That's a long throw, too. His strong arm. Beautiful play. They're happy to have him back. Now, talking about J.J. Hardy, you say he's got one hit. Well, he's one of those guys that I think has the itch to want to play consecutive games mm -hmm. just so he can get that swing down. Wilson Betamy takes a strike. Wilson with an infield hit his last that bat, which was his second hit of the spring. And a bounce of foul right over a Wayne Kirby who makes the play. Look at those hands. He still has those quick hands. Oh, that's a quick release, too, from Wayne. And he was an outfield. <laughs> Betamid is playing in his seventh game. He is two out of 18 in his at bats. He has seen time at third and first. DH as well. Breaking ball outside. We talked about as the games dwindle down and the regulars begin to play more. The players who are fighting for spots, their, their possibilities of playing time will be reduced. One and two on Wilson Betamy. And this is strike three called. He thought it was high, and Neiman gets the call and two men down. Looks like a little cut fastball on the outside corner. Just came back enough to catch the corner. A little bit of a frame right there by Lopaton and gets the call for strike three. But Buck Showalter, one of the things he does, and uh, he is just so prepared, and usually he's days ahead of where he is at the moment. But they have charts uh, in the clubhouse, likely in his office, of how many plate appearances. Ooh, look out. As Connor Jackson gets out of the way of that breaking ball that slipped out of his hand. Take a look at it here. Just a release point a little bit high from Neiman and just gets out of the way. I'll tell you, if that, even though it's a breaking ball, that catches him up in the neck or the face, that's going to leave a mark for sure. Well, 1 0 pitch to Jackson and he popped him up. Shallow right center field. That ball trouble and it falls in for a base hit. Ryan Roberts was in on it. Desmond Jennings deep and there's a base hit, a bloop for Connor Jackson and two down. But the Plate appearances are important because, as Buck points out, all the players who are fighting to get a look, well, they're getting a look. And if you look at the plate appearances, they're really within one, two, maybe three of every player having about the same amount. And it's even to the point where Adam Jones, who's in the World Baseball Classic, every time he comes to the plate for Team USA, that goes on the board here as a plate appearance for Adam getting ready for the season. So it's all about how do you utilize all these players? How do you give them a chance? And then, oh, by the way, the closer we get to opening day, how do you play your regulars back-to-back -back games? Maybe some road trips for the regulars coming up. Yeah. Well, you certainly have to keep a chart of that. And, and Buck being so attentive to detail, I mean, he's got his pulse on everything. And uh, he certainly has to keep track of that, understand how many at-bats guys have. Jason Pridey, a high fly ball to right center field. The wind has it, but Jennings has a beat on it. He has it for the out. Center field to grab it. Two out blue pick for Jackson and one left with through four in Sarasota, Tampa Bay with a 3-0 lead.
Well, it's a good time of the afternoon for a snack as you enjoy the game. Nice crowd on hand at Ed Smith Stadium. And here is the Orioles closer, Jim Johnson, brought on in the fifth inning. It was last year a brilliant career year for Jim. Led the major leagues in saves. Two and one record. And 51 saves for the Orioles last year. And the final two months of the season, no blown saves. Yeah, well, just an outstanding job, obviously, from Jim Johnson. And uh, very rarely, if you will never see him come into a game in the fifth inning during the regular season. But this is an opportunity to start Jim off with a clean inning, get him out of here early. So he doesn't have to sit around in the bullpen and uh, get his work in. And the other benefit to that is he will face major league hitters this early in the game. If he comes in in the ninth, they might all be out of the game by then. So it's a better gauge of where he is at this point, coming in in the fifth. It's only his second official game appearance and his third overall. He made a spring debut against Team Spain in the exhibition game on March 6th. He gave up an unearned run in one inning. There's the 1-1 one -one to Jennings. It's low. And then his second appearance came on March the 10th. He had a scoreless inning. You know on April 2nd, he'll be waiting for the ninth inning. Foul off his foot. Of course, not only is it important to have a closer of the caliber of Jim Johnson, but on a team that last year contended and went to the playoffs and was in so many close games where a run here or there did matter, having a guy like that is such a bonus. Sharply hit towards third. Bedemy diving stop. And no throw. He knew it was Jennings held on to the ball. But Bedemy with that diving stop saved the double. Jennings is on with a leadoff hit. So Tampa Bay looking for more in the fifth inning. Oriole Park is the perfect setting for your next group outing. Gather up your family, friends, co-workers, or colleagues and enjoy a fun-filled day or night of Orioles baseball with discounted ticket prices for groups as small as 12 fans and party facilities to fill 1,000 fans. Oriole Park at Camden Yards can make your group outing an experience you won't forget. 888-848-BIRD or visit Orioles.com slash groups. Billy Johnson has been up twice. He has walked twice. And then a toss to first to chase De Desmond Jennings. Tampa Bay has had base runners in every at bat today. Johnson skies it down the line, and that will fall foul. And talking about close games and closing out close games, Mike, here are the top six pitching teams in the American League last year. This is by ERA, not by wins. But how important it is to have quality and balance throughout the lineup. The Orioles had the sixth best ERA, winning 93 games. Tampa Bay had the best pitching, won 90, and didn't make the playoffs. But you see all those teams and the pitching and the teams in yellow, of course, all were postseason teams. Two of the top teams did not make the playoffs. But you win those close games how? You have a good bullpen. Right. You win those extra inning games how? You have a good bullpen. And when you have a guy like this to hand the ball to needing three outs, uh, you're going to win your share of those games. Well, there are so many great stories, obviously, last year's Orioles team, but the bullpen certainly took the number one spot. They were outstanding. Every one of those guys, Darren O'Day, Pedro Strope was awesome. Of course, Olade's relief man of the year, Jim Johnson. He had only three blown saves, and the last was July the 27th against Oakland. When he allowed six runs in just a third of an inning in the ninth inning. So his ERA would be even better if you throw that one game out. He blew a save at Boston on June 5th, but then pitched the 10th inning and got the win. He blew a save against the Tigers on July 14th and then won against Oakland on July 27th. And that was it. 51 out of 54 and none after July 27th. He was that consistent. His ERA after that blown save, Mike, he pitched in 26 games, 21 saves, 0 0.36 from July 27th on. That's amazing. It's kind of... Uh, I think the A's got him mad. <laughs> yeah, right. 
And of course the Orioles defense uh, got a lot better there in the second half of the season. Jennings went on the 3 2. Davis will take it to the bag himself. Desmond Jennings moves to second base in scoring position with one down. Of course, the year before, Jim was not the closer until later in the year. And he pitched 91 innings in 69 games. Last year, he only pitched 68 and two thirds innings despite getting in two more games, 71. Because now it's a defined role. Evan Longoria, runner at second with one down. And then a swing and a miss. And there was even talk last year in spring training about Jim Johnson possibly uh, working back into the starting role. Thank goodness they didn't make that transition. Breaking ball for a strike for the second base and Jennings get back in. Another great play by Matt Weider thrown behind a runner. We saw it earlier in the ball game thrown behind to Chris Davis at first and here Brian Roberts sneaks in behind Jennings at second base and great snap throw. Keeping guys honest out there, shorten them up a little bit. You see Brian Rod Roberts acknowledging the good throw there. So two pitch paints the outside corner and a call strike three. You know, a lot of these plays that you see in spring training, it's just to make sure everybody's on the same page. Take a look at Jim Johnson on this fastball on the outside corner. Look at the late movement as it comes back over that outer third of the plate, just locking Evan Longoria up. Gave up on that fastball. <laughs> so much movement comes back over for the strike. You know, strike out for Jim Johnson. Luke Scott now, two run home run, his last at bat. So you like the uh, 2013 version of Luke's beard? Looks like he has a bare spot on his chin. <laughs> he changes his look all the time. And a bouncer right back to Jim Johnson who plays that tough hop and he gets it to first. So the infield hit for one run. Good inning for Jim Johnson. Mid fifth in Sarasota. Birds coming up. Down by three. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Baltimore Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. Yes, the Oriole bird has flown south for the winter. And before you know it, what, about a week, it'll be spring. Had a nice talk with the bird before the game. He was in good spirits, feeling good. Enjoying his time down here before the pressures he goes through in the regular season. I'll tell you what, I'm glad he's doing it. That's a tough gig, <laughs> being the bird. Yeah, it gets so hot in Baltimore, and, and uh, having to communicate by whistling, that's tough. <laughs> Brian Roberts leads off. 
And a bouncer past the mound, charging in Ryan Roberts. He'll throw to first to get Brian Roberts. And on one pitch, one away, and B Rob is 0 for 3. And trying to get a good swing on the first pitch, and the ground ball hit slowly towards second. Yep, it's a high sky today. Windy as usual. Here's Nolan Rymel DHing today. He's 0 for 2. Off speed pitch in there for a strike. Well, Neiman's doing a nice job keeping hitters off balance. Uh, not many Orioles guys have squared up many balls off him as well. The 0 1 is down and away. One of them on the count. Well, this was a big spring for Neiman, as Mike talked about. It was Adam Lind who hit that ball right back at him and fractured his right leg. He was on the DL from May 15th until September 1st. As Rymel hits it to left center field, that'll fall for a base hit. Jennings a good job to get to it. Rymel the big turn, and he puts on the brakes. And Nolan Rymel with his fourth hit of the spring. Take a look at Nolan's swing right here. Nice load, stays on that ball. The reason he was able to drive that ball through, he keeps that bat head through the strike zone a long time. Just gets enough of the good part of the bat on it to drive it out into left center field. But I'll tell you what, the way Nolan Rimmel was rounding first, it looked like he was going to head into second. Real aggressive turn around first base. Well, Nolan's got a four game hitting streak now, and that's good for him. You want to get your at bats more consistent as you get towards the spring. Pitching change, Jeff Neiman leaves. Bottom of the fifth, O's down by three. Well, back here in Sarasota, we let Mike board at the boat last night, and uh, oh, here's the result. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to park the boat. <laughs> what a beautiful day. Here is Juan Sandoval coming on in relief of Jeff Neiman. Yeah, Sandoval last year uh, spent time in the Mexican League. 67 games, and that low ERA, 2.97. That's what gives him the opportunity to earn a spot here with Tampa Bay. He's only been in uh, five or six games here this spring. A little bit of a lofty earned run average, but the potential is certainly there. They'll go to work on Nate McLeod with Rymold at first and one down, and the Orioles down 3 0. And the fastball's outside and 1 0. Nate has walked, stolen a base, and he has grounded out. Rhyme all the one out single. Orioles trying to chip back in it here, down by three. Fastball in the inside corner for a called strike. Sandoval originally signed with Seattle. He is out of the Dominican Republic back in 2001. He missed 2006. He 
injured his eye in a gun accident in the Dominican Republic and he missed all of 2006. And he has spent the last two years pitching in the Mexican professional league at well, the age of 32 trying to make it back with Tampa Bay. Rymel goes the two one is swung on and foul back. And that swoop of speed is another great tool Nolan Reimholt possesses. I know that he has great power potential. He can run. But I'll tell you what, if you have you know, Nate McLeod, Nolan Reimholt, Brian Roberts, and just another piece of uh, you know offensive potential right there, that speed can really change the dynamic of a team. Throw to first to chase Reimholt back. Neiman went four and a third. He allowed four hits, no runs. Reimold his responsibility, struck out three and walked three. So the starters beginning to stretch out a little bit as he works into the fifth inning. Two and two on the clock. Inside, ball three. Clouth has five hits on the spring, one hit in five separate games. Rymel goes, the 3 2 is outside ball four. Warriors have two on with one out, trailing by three. Of course, a guy like Sandoval, he's looking to stick with Tampa Bay. But at worst, he could be minor league insurance for the Rays, bringing a guy. Likely on the minor league contract if he makes it to the bigs, the major league minimum. Of course, they always have their payroll concerns in Tampa Bay, and despite that, do a great job. They sure do. Matt Weeders now, he has walked twice. And a little bit low, 1 0. Readers now in his fifth season with the Orioles. Hard to believe. And then a strike in the outside corner. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun though watching Matt Weeders kind of grow and mature as a leader on this team. Obviously, the two gold, gold gloves kind of speak for themselves, but. You know he's captured this leadership role along with players like Adam Jones and, and JJ Hardy and, and it's a nice group effort. There really isn't one true voice. It's a combination of a few guys the nucleus Nick Markakis. You know is in that mix and uh, these guys have such great work habits. They back up what they preach and that's playing the game hard and playing it right every day and uh, just great role models for for all the players on the team, Look at Jason Him over there watching the game. Uh, there's a uh, quite a relationship between, or a unique relationship between Neiman and, and Hamill, because when Hamill was with Tampa Bay, he and Neiman were competing for the fifth spot back when Jason was there. Well, they actually they obviously left Neiman on the Tampa Bay team, and they got rid of Jason Hamill. He went out to Colorado. That was kind of interesting. I mean, we're lucky to have Jason Hamill as our number one guy. Two and two on Weeders. High fly ball to center field. Jennings going back, still chasing it back, and it's gone. Straight away center field for Matt Weeders. And with one swing, he has tied the game at three. Number two in the spring for Matt. Well, Matt Readers is having an exceptional spring offensively. He keeps it going here, and that's the beauty of this ball club. It's nice to see, even though it's a fifth inning team fighting back, getting back in this game, and this fastball just runs back over the plate. Matt Readers able to get his arms extended, driving it out over the center field fence over Jennings' head. Here's Chris Davis still only one down and the pitch is high. Well, watching that ball travel, 
Reimold wasn't sure, so he was holding up to see the tag. McLeod, who was at first saw it all the way, he was sprinting, and Jennings had no idea it was going to go that far. It just kept going. The Orioles have now hit 22 home runs in their spring games. Of course, the home run last year was such a big part of their offensive success. Including Chris Davis, who led the team with 33. Weeders now has a six game hitting streak. Of course, the players don't want to leave all those hits in spring games, but it's got to be good that you're feeling good at the play. Well, that's really what it's all about because every one of these guys have a great swing. It's just a matter of, you know, how you're feeling internally. Do you have that confidence? And, and I think it's funny because here Matt Waiters comes in this game and sitting 471. Well, yesterday after the workout, he didn't make the trip obviously down to Fort Myers, but after the workout, he wanted extra batting practice. So he was hitting 471 in spring, so he takes extra batting practice out on the backfield and, and works on his left handed stroke. And boy, it paid it off right there, right? Three run home run and tie this ball game up. So what you're saying is your arm got extra work yesterday. I did not throw the extra DP <laughs> to Matt Wieters. No, I just got to sit in the outfield and enjoy it. <laughs> so you were the shagger. Yes, I was. <laughs> Number 14, the high price shagger. <laughs> J.J. Hardy takes inside 1-0. Oh. Well, for the guys that don't make the trips and stay behind and get their work in, I mean, look, look at the guys that are working with him. You got Terry Crowley, you got Mike Bordick. I mean, they're, they're quality instructors in this camp for that. Well, we're there just to help out. These guys know what they have to do, especially when you have a group. Yesterday it was J.J. Hardy, Brian Roberts, Chris Davis, Matt Wieters, Wilson Betterment, some great veteran players that know what they have to do to prepare themselves and get themselves ready. And the beauty of it is that they have fun doing it. There was great intensity. You know, stayed back group. They got their work in the right way. And actually, it was Matt Wheaters, J.J. Hardy, and Chris Davis that stayed back for extra BP after the regular BP. All right, explain to us what goes on exactly. Is it like what we watch every day on the main field here, regular batting practice, or are there other drills that go on there for the players that don't? go to the games on the road. Right. Well, there are some certain drills that some guys like to do. Chris Davis is one that, that through the course of the spring. Brown ball to short. Escobar fields. But he'll get Hardy to end the inning. And, of course, I began a story with two men down. <laughs> Matt Wieters with one swing of the bat has tied it. But Wieters, his second spring home run, will head to the sixth. New game tied at three. Join us on Sunday. More O Spring training action as the Orioles will welcome the Twins to town. Our coverage on Mass and HD begins at 1 o'clock. And be sure to log on to MassAtSports.com all spring long. The Rock Kabako and his daily coverage here from spring training 
MassinSports.com. Rocco has it covered, and we'll be back with you. Mike and I on Sunday against the Twins. And that is a split squad day for the Orioles. And Darren O'Day comes in in relief for Jim Johnson. Darren, of course, last year, one of the horses out of that bullpen. We talked about him earlier. 2.28 earned run average. Came up with some of the biggest outs of the year. And here he is in spring training. This is going to be just his second inning. Getting his work in, starting to get his work in more. And we'll see, definitely see more of Darren O'Day here in the next couple weeks to get stronger and stronger. They'll face Yunel Escobar leading off. Jim Johnson, a scoreless inning. Mm. O'Day, the fourth pitcher used now, gets ahead. Escobar has lined out to Belfiore on a pitch right back at the pitcher. He's also bounced into a force play. And down and in, one on the count. O'Day, like Jim Johnson, made his spring debut in the exhibition game against the World Baseball Classic team from Spain. He allowed two runs in an inning there. And he worked a scoreless inning on March the 10th. Swing and a miss as O'Day gets it by Escobar. Of course, the World Baseball Classic, as teams are eliminated, the players on those teams return to their teams. Chris Robinson, who was on the Canadian team, back now in the Orioles camp. But not Mr. Jones, nor Mr. Stroke. 1 2 is outside with a breaking ball, 2 and 2. Then we hope you can tune in tonight on MLB Network, the WBC. There's Adam Jones, and the Team USA team goes against the Dominican Republic. Both winning their first games in that bracket and need a win tonight as they then will advance to the final round if they do. There's a hard hit ball to third. Right there is Betterme. Looks at the signature and then throws across. And one there. You know, talking about BassettSports.com, Rockabaca has been down there the whole time. Steve Molesky's here. I see Steve walking with the reporters behind home plate. It's Steve Molesky. There he is. <laughs> so 3-3 three, three game. Steve must be in heaven here because he gets to see all the minor, all the minor leaguers, league yeah. guys. He was reports and there are a lot of quality minor leaguers that have had opportunities to play here in spring training. But also Twin Lakes is right down the road so he can cover everybody. Yeah, he does a great job at MassinSports.com. If a prospect gets promoted, he knows why. I mean, he follows it day in and day out. Here's Matt Joyce. One for two. Breaking ball in there for a strike. We'll take a look at the defensive shift here. It's Brian Roberts playing a short right field. J.J. Hardy swung all the way over on the second base side of second base. High fly ball left center field. Long run for Pridey. Still out there. Looks up, but it's off the wall. Plays the count perfectly, and he fires back in. That choice hit it a long way, but off the wall. Yeah, we were talking about the shift. Now, a lot of times, managers will put a shift on because the tendency is... So the hitter will hit the ball on the ground more likely to that side of the field. Now outfield play is different. The ball, usually if the ball is hit in the air, we say they won't have big shifts like that in the outfield. So a hitter like Joyce obviously drove that ball to the left center field gap. You know, outfielders will probably play straight up, but the tendency to get the out on the ground is more so to that right side. That's why the managers put that big shift on. James Loney looks over a strike. Darren O'Day signed a three-year contract in the offseason. He avoided arbitration. Contract well earned. And the pitch is outside one and one. You know, you look at this team, and here's Darren O'Day's 30 pitcher in his prime. Jason Hamill's 30. Jason's the old guy of the rotation. He's in his prime. 
There are a lot of players and obviously by design put together to come together at this moment. Players in their primes that are using their skills, their particular skills to help this team win. Well, last year, O'Day won seven games. One of nine relievers only in the major leagues to have won at least seven games. And against the AL East, he was 4-0 with an ERA of 1.10. That's huge. That's huge. If you can pitch against the American League East and have those kind of numbers, you deserve a three-year deal. Ball and a strike on Loney. Joyce at second with one down, and that pitch misses down and away. And the thing about Darren O'Day that is so beneficial to the Orioles is how effective he is against left-handed batters. And the strike. Nice backdoor slider yeah. right there from O'Day. Last year, for a good part of the season, Troy Patton was the only left-handed reliever. But Darren O'Day held left-handed batters to a 207 average. So in those games where Patton might not be available or Buck wanted to save him for another part in the game, you bring O'Day in. The 2-2 pitch, high, checked it in time. Yeah, certainly the beauty of Darren O'Day is the fact that he isn't a matchup guy. He can be a matchup guy, but he can be extended and fill up a full inning or even pitch two. Uh, full count with one down, Joyce at second. The day the fourth Oriole pitcher used. And a tapper back to the mound. O'Day looked at third. Takes the sure out at first for the second out of the inning. Well, Joyce ends up at third as Loney is retired. You know, that World Baseball Classic game tonight with Team USA facing the Dominican Republic. Wouldn't it be nice to see Adam Jones have to face Pedro Stroke, who's on the Dominican team? <laughs> well, that'd be fun. For sure. Tampa Bay also has a, a similar possibility because Ben Zobrist is on the team for the Americans and Fernando Rodney is on the team for the Dominican Republic. I wonder if Adam would enjoy hitting against Pedro. I don't know that many guys do enjoy hitting off Pedro Stroke. And he's got that 97, 98 mile an hour fastball, and when he's on his slider, we've seen how successful he can be with that. It's a devastating pitch, hard down the way. Two and zero on Ryan Roberts, who has bounced out twice. A little bit low ball three. And ball four. Not a bad pitch. Just didn't get the call. Right at the bottom of the zone. Uh, runners on the corners with two men down. Jose Lobatomo bat now. Switch hitting catcher. So now these are the kind of situations that manager Joe Madden kind of lives for. Here we go with we have first and third situation, two outs, catcher hitting. You know. So if the count gets in. The Orioles favor. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to steal a run, but Lobaton does not let. Pop up, shallow right center. McClough is there. He's got it. And O'Day works around a double and a walk. And two men left. Bottom of the six coming up in Sarasota. 3 3 game.
Nick Markakis back in camp. He went home to be looked at by the spine doctor, and we talked with Nick about the diagnosis of his bulging disc. Well, the doctor said full, full 100% recovery. It could be 8 to 12 weeks, but that's not saying that it's going to take that long. It's, you know, I could play after two weeks, three weeks. Like I said, it's just about a, a matter of how I feel and, and what my symptoms are. And, uh, you know, everything is going fine right now. I'm actually pain-free, don't have any pain, and, uh, you know, I'm a long ways from where I was uh, 10 days ago. So that, that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, each day just keeps going in a positive direction. So, you know, opening day is definitely not 100% out of the picture. Um, you know, that's what we're shooting for. That's what I would like. And, uh, you know, personally, um, this is coming from me. I, I believe that I, I should be able to, uh, you know, get back out there if everything goes well. So, Nick Markakis, the uh, two- to three-week recovery time is what uh, you hope it takes. But as he said, the doctor told him it could take even longer, but they don't think so. Uh, you can see the entire interview with Nick about uh, coming back from the bulging disc on the Mid-Atlantic Sports Report on Masson later on today at 5 o'clock. And uh, Nick said he doesn't need a lot of that bats He already had some before this happened. Uh, so he's seen the ball. He feels he could get right back in there. And it's just a matter of uh, if the medicine does what it's supposed to do. Right, right. If that takes hold. And, you know, I think Nick is very optimistic here because of the fact of what he had to go through last spring. You know, he had limited playing time last spring and was still able to start the season. So, you know, he knows what he needs as a veteran player now. And, and uh, he doesn't need 50 at bats. And he doesn't need to be out in the field, you know, to play, you know, a week straight. Uh, so... You know, I, I, he's optimistic. I, I think everybody else is optimistic that it wasn't as bad, you know, as it seemed. So uh, he's just moving forward and, and taking it day to day, which is all he really can do. And once he starts going, they give him the green light. Trust me, he's going to put the work in to get himself ready for opening day. Sandoval came on last inning and allowed the home run by Weeders that tied the game. Stays in. One two to better meet misses. It's got to be a little frustrating though. You know, you mentioned what Nick had to battle through last year, but because of that, when it comes to spring training, look at the turn of the page, and then unfortunately, a different kind of an injury. Oh, you know, he's very frustrated about it, even though it didn't show in that interview. But he went through so much last year, obviously battling through that the operation and then trying to get himself healthy. Through spring training and that unfortunate, you know, being hit by the pitch, breaking his thumb there at the end of the year and not being able to participate in the postseason. Boy, that pulled on everybody's heart. But, you know, he's still grinding and uh, he's still very optimistic and excited about this year. Well, some better meet good at bat. He works the walk. Of course, you know, Buck Showalter wants to pencil in number 21 on opening day in Tampa Bay. And that's the hope. 3-3 game, leadoff man on in the sixth. There's Connor Jackson. Connor blooped in a single in the fourth. He's also popped up to second base. And down and in. So Sandoval, it appears he's nibbling. And he's causing himself to fall behind in counts. Wilson Betterman with that nice at bat, and you can see just a little bit of the inconsistency. So pitcher or hitters, Orioles hitters can really be patient, look for their pitch, kind of center it up, up in the zone over the plate. Be aggressive there. Throw behind Betterman who just got back. Connor Jackson with the base hit is 11th in the spring. And he looks over a strike. As Connor Jackson has had time in the big leagues with Arizona, with Oakland. Thirty years old, it's on 31 in May. Two one is fouled off. J 
Jackson getting a start in right field today. Then Buck Showalter has to plan for what if. What if Nick is not on the roster on opening day. So who might go out there. And again you're facing David Price on opening night. So he's a lefty. Might that player take the spot a right handed bat. 2 2 swung on and missed. He got it. Jackson down on strikes and one away. Sandoval showing that his fastball has some amazing life to it. Look at that run. It's down and in on Connor Jackson, unable to get to it. He's just harnessing that fastball and being consistent throwing for strikes seems to be the problem. And he does. There's some great movement, great late life. Here's Jason Friday, an infield hit in two trips. Better meet at first now with one down. And ball one down and away. And the other player that is intriguing if a spot opens up in the outfield, and you mentioned it before, is Lou Ford. Lou Ford is now tied with Connor Jackson for the most hits in the spring with 11. He's batting 550, and he plays everywhere in the outfield. And he's a right handed bat. Hard hit ball knocked down by Sandoval. He'll chase it and get it to first for the out. Now, I don't know how Joe Madden's going to pencil in the rotation after David Price, but if Matt Moore is in that opening three-game series, you have the possibility of facing two left-handers. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure Buck is, uh, you know, his wheels are turning about every possible option. Here's Brian Roberts, runner at second now in Betamy. Brian has popped up and grounded out twice, 0 for 3. Neiman started when four and a third allowed a run and Sandoval now in his second inning was allowed two runs including an inherited runner to score plus an inherited runner strike in the outside corner. Got to meet at second with two down. And then Roberts a close pitch but he took it ball one. Again down and in. Orioles have had some real good at bats today in looking over pitches. Well, they really have. Well, Brian Roberts, I mean, if you want a big league at bat, he certainly is well aware of his own strike zone and he can work the count when needed. Jim Presley talking with the skipper. Which the hitting coach notices all of those at bats. Even during batting practice, uh, one of the hitters in the group was Rymel the Weeders. I don't remember which. He first said, "Hey, good swing, but it was a ball. <laughs> don't swing it. Even though it's a nice looking swing, don't swing at that pitch." So there's just those reminders as, as they're in there working on things. Two one is a called strike, breaking ball in there. Now one thing that that all organizations can improve on is on base percentage. You know, the more Opportunities you get with runners on base, you're going to put more pressure on the opposing team. So that's been a message from Dan Duquette. Obviously, uh, Buck Show Walter trying to improve the on base percentage because you get one or two guys on, and especially the way the Orioles' power numbers. Ground ball towards Escobar. He was right there, and he'll get Roberts, and that will end the inning. The leadoff walk doesn't come around to hurt Sandoval. We're through six. Heading to the seventh, Dylan Bundy about to come out for the Birds in a 3 3 game.
Dylan Bundy comes on to pitch for the Orioles in the seventh in this 3-3 game. And Bundy is having a good camp as well. And his three appearances, February 23rd, which was the Orioles' first game, he had a scoreless inning against Minnesota with a couple of hits. Then at Pittsburgh, he had two scoreless innings and no earned runs. And then March 9th against the Red Sox last Saturday, he made the start. A lot of one earned run because of an error in the outfield in two innings. But uh, pretty good, Mike, when you look at it, just one unearned run allowed for Dylan Bundy. Well, I mean, Dylan Bunny, obviously one of the top prospects in all of baseball in the Orioles. Certainly a great pick for them to get him last year. He hasn't disappointed. And I'll tell you what, I mean, this spring they've talked about maybe velocity being down a little bit. 94 mile an hour fastball. If it's down, <laughs> let's see what's up. Because he, uh, he does have a strong arm. He's going to throw in the mid 90s, but he's been pitching better. He's been able to utilize his slider, his changeup. I think with the help last year being working his way through the minor leagues and developing his secondary pitches comes into this big league camp and he's concerned he thinks his velocity is down a little bit but he's pitching better he's understanding what it's going to take to get hitters out especially here in spring training big league hitters and uh, still uh, everybody's positive about Dylan Bundy and excited about the opportunity to have him. Jennings a fly ball a mile high to left LJ Hose who's now in the game gets over to it. And he has it for the out. Dylan Bundy retires Jennings and one away. Now here's a look at the uh, Orioles' defensive changes here in the seventh inning. LJ Hose out in left field, Robinson in center field, Steve Pierce in right, Danny Valencia playing third, Brian Flaherty over short, Navarro playing second, Ishikawa at first, and Exposito doing the catching. Swinging a foul back off the bat of Kelly Johnson. So Buck Showalter just changed his entire team. <laughs> One half in. So a foul back. Quickly on two. And so many of these guys that you're seeing here in the later innings of this ball game have done such a great job for the Orioles and, and taken full advantage of their opportunities. Playing time. Weekly hit fly ball to right, moving over his Pierce, and Steve gets it. And Bundy gets two quick outs and a couple of fly balls. And Steve Pierce, one of those guys. And Bundy, a couple good pitches right there. Has not hit too hard. Easy outs for the outfielders. And Bundy this year, he will pitch the entire season at age 20. He doesn't turn 21 until November 15th. Here's Longoria. Breaking ball a little high. Looked like a good pick. Yeah, like Might have pitch. fooled John Hirschbeck. Fooled Longoria, that's for sure. A little buckler there. <laughs> yeah, the fastball a little bit low. Chris Bundy last year brought along by design very slowly by the Orioles. He made eight starts at Delmarva, but only pitched a total there of 30 innings. His initial starts were three innings. There's a pitch for a strike. This pitch will change up in the outside corner. And then after the innings began to get to the point where he would go five innings, he was promoted to Frederick. Ground ball towards short. Flaherty to his left. It's a nice hop. And he gets it to first. And a real clean three up, three down inning for Dylan Bundy. Seventh inning stretch in Sarasota. Good game. O's and Rays are tied at three.
Gus Lukey comes on for Tampa Bay. He'll become the third pitcher in this 3-3 game. Right-hander out of the pen. Yeah, Lukey uh, pitched in Triple-A Durham last year for Tampa Bay. And 40, pitched 40 games, a 2-6 record. A 5.59 earned run average. A little bit lofty, but good opportunity here to show Joe Madden and the rest of the staff what he's capable of doing. And numerous defensive changes. Yeah, take a look at the Rays defensive changes, much like the Orioles. Burgess over in left field, Rodriguez in center, Myers in right field, Beckham and Figueroa up the middle, Fontenot playing third, Jimenez at first base, and Chirinos doing the catching. So Beckham and Myers, two of the top prospects for Tampa Bay in the game now, and Russ Kanzler will pinch it for Nolan Reimold. Nolan was one out of three in his at bats today. And it's down and in one and oh. Last season, 269 average, three home runs, 11 RBIs. And you can't catch up to it, one and one. Fastball looked good, 92 miles an hour. And so just uh, swung through that one. Hard at ball towards the hole. Tim Beckham gets a big hop and it shows off the arm and one away. Beckham, a former first round pick of Tampa Bay. Uh, one away, and L.J. Hose will get his first at bat. He is in Nate McLeod's spot. We're talking about the plate appearances and how Buck Showalter keeps track of each player to make sure that they're getting their at bats when they're available. Fans who look at the box scores after games may have noticed that the changes when players go into the games are not necessarily straight up, meaning the if somebody replaces a left fielder, he doesn't always go into that spot in the lineup. And Buck explained before the game today, well, there's a reason for that. If he thinks guys who are going in need more at-bats, he'll get them in where they're coming up in the lineup instead of waiting for the lineup to turn over. So Hose is in the center fielder spot, even though he's playing in left field. Good breaking ball, swing and miss. It was. First pitch, nice fastball in the outer third. Backs it up with a really good breaking ball down and away to Hedge Hose. And LJ batting with one out, none on. 3 3 game. Weeders home run tied it in the fifth. Breaking ball stays inside. LJ has a two game hitting streak going and he's hit five of his last six games. Yeah, he's had a nice spring. You know he misses Adam Jones too. Swing and a miss, he got him. Another big breaking ball right there from Luki. Seems to be his go to pitch. Gets that top of the zone. There's a late bite on that. Big rotation. LJ swinging right over the top of it. You know, the bearded one gets back to back players, ground out, and a strikeout. Here's Ryan Flaherty, who was in Matt Weeder's spot. The other thing that the managers don't have to do in these spring games is go up and report to the home plate umpire where the substitutions are going on the line of card so they can make it up as they go if they want. Hey, go in and hit for this guy because the home plate umpire doesn't keep track. It's spring training. 
Here's the one out of Flaherty, and he takes a strike. Luki, 28 years old. He was picked up in a trade with Seattle. The Orioles saw him pitch for the Mariners and for Tampa Bay. Check swing, and he went too far. John Hirschbeck says so. I think Hirschbeck said yes. He did. The base umpire said no. Hirschbeck brought up the hand, and he's hearing about it from the bench. A bit of miscommunication right there. Bill Welke's the umpire at third, you just saw. Usually, the umpire of the bases won't do anything unless he's asked, and he wasn't asked. <laughs> and he signaled anyway. One, two is inside and bounces. Take that one. Flaherty in the game at shortstop. He has played very well defensively at shortstop. He sure has. And, you know, there's a question mark, too. I think last year when he came into spring training, he obviously had to show how versatile he was. So he was all over the field. And I think the knock on him coming out of spring was that he might not be able to make that throw from the hole at short. Uh, Buck has uh, put him to the test this spring. And, and he's certainly uh, done a nice job over there, made all the plays. What has he done to improve on that? Well, it's really just a matter of making sure you make the throws consistently over there, especially if you're bouncing around the field because the throw is different from every position. So for him, it's just a matter of getting his work in it short and maybe making some extra throws from the hole. Off the end of the bat, left center field. Wind has it a little bit. And the center fielder, Sean Rodriguez, over to make the catch. And the inning is over. Three up, three down to the birds in the seventh. Eighth inning coming up in Sarasota. We're tied at three. spring training at the official online shop of the Orioles with the largest selection of authentic spring training gear including clubhouse caps and t-shirts jerseys sweatshirts and more get set for spring at the official source the Orioles.com shop breeze blowing Dylan Bundy throwing some breeze by the hitters yeah, he sure 97 is. in the last inning the other night when he pitched in Fort Myers he, he said he doesn't know where his velocity is. I think he found it. Yeah, here it is. Fastball for a strike. Luke Scott still in there. Luke has a two-run home run in this game. And a big swing and a miss. Oh, I love it how they're, the catchers are challenging their young pitchers to... You know, throw a fastball for a ball, back it up with a changeup and a good hitter's count. Oh, 
A little bit inside. It sounded like it almost hit the bat. Luke checked the swing and the, the knob of the bat was exposed there. And then a hard hit ball foul. The Bundy last year, three stops, Delmarva, Frederick, and Bowie. Was with Bowie for the playoffs. Total of 103 and two-thirds innings in his regular season games in the minors. Hard hit ball towards the middle, but right there is Flaherty in the shift. Once the Orioles know Luke Scott, and he's retired for the first out, one away. Bundy's retired all four. Mike Fontenot getting his first at bat. He is in the Unel Escobar spot, former first round draft pick of the Orioles back in 2001 out of LSU. He is now 32 years old. And the pitch is high, 1 0. Monday, two ground outs, two fly ball outs. Strike in the outside corner. Of course, Mike Fontenot was in the trade the Orioles made when they got Sammy Sosa from the Chicago Cubs. The Orioles sent Fontenot, minor league pitcher Dave Crothers, and Jerry Hairston to the Cubs. That was in February of 2005, so right before the 2005 season. One two pitch breaking ball he lays off. One of those guys the Orioles had high hopes for but the problem was when he was drafted. He had not only Jerry Hairston in the Orioles organization he was looking up at he had Brian Roberts he was looking up at. Two two pitch is low ball three and. Brian solidified that second base would be his and Jerry Hairston then was included in that trade as well. He has played for the Cubs, the Giants, and the Phillies in the big leagues. Bouncer to first, big hop there for Ishikawa. Then he goes down to get it as the ball spun on him. And he gets to the back two down. And Travis Ishikawa, boy, is he in the club at first base. He just looks so natural. Yeah, he, he's a smooth defender for sure. And ideally, I think, I mean, the best first baseman are usually left-handed. They're able to make that throw to second base so smoothly. Think of guys like Lyle Overbay and... Ishikawa just smooth defenders. Rafael Palmero, obviously. Great left handed first base. And a nice, easy, smooth transition there. John Rodriguez takes ball one. And Travis trying to show that, you well, know, I, I keep hearing you need a backup first baseman. Mm -hmm. How about this glove? Oh, yeah. Oh, they know. They're well aware of it, that's for sure. Of the trio that we've been talking about in the battle for that possible one roster spot, Travis is the only one who has played exclusively at first base. Obviously, he can't play third because he's a lefty thrower, but he has not played at all in the outfield. Meantime, 3 0 on Sean Rodriguez. There's a strike. Rodriguez, an infielder by trade, playing in center field. And the two out walk. And Rodriguez will trot down to first base. First base runner allowed by Dylan Bundy. Paul Figueroa, the second baseman, now getting in that bat. Foul back. <laughs> Put throw to first and diving back in is Rodriguez. Bundy keeping him close. 
Figueroa is a non roster invitee to spring. We've seen Dylan Bundy, who is on the Orioles Major League roster. Runner goes, pitch taken high, throw to second by Esposito, sails, and there's a stolen base. Well, a couple throwovers. I think they knew that they were going to try to steal this bag. That's why Dylan Bundy picked off a couple times, but a nice jump by Rodriguez and a pretty good pitch for Esposito to handle to make a good throw, but that one just takes off up and away. Uh, Rodriguez in safely now in scoring position with two outs. Pop up foul off the end of the bat, third base side. There's Valencia. And he battles the wind and he has it for the out. Bundy works around it. Two out walk, stolen base, and a man left. Bottom of the eighth coming up. O's and Rays remain tied 3 3. Well, good game, 3-3. Home runs uh, big in this one. Weeders a three-run shot. Luke Scott a two-run shot for Tampa Bay. Nate McLeod no longer in the game, but Nate, nice enough to join us out there uh, beyond the Orioles' bullpen. And, uh, Nate, this is the time of spring. i got to believe the players are getting a little bit anxious to get into that regular season routine. Have you reached that point yet? I'm getting there. Uh, we've had, you know, kind of a few days off mixed in with a little bit longer spring training. And, um, still got almost three weeks, two and a half weeks, whatever it is to go. And, and I think it's about getting to about that time where we're, where we're getting those juices flowing a little bit. Now, we hear all the time the players in the spring, they have to work back into getting the eye back, the swing, the timing. Where are you in that regard? Um, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, I feel like my eyes, my eyes good. My swings um, hit or miss some days. It's some days it feel better, feels better than others. But, um, you know, luckily we've got a couple weeks left to, to, to get it rolling. Hey, Nate, Mike Bordick here. Um, it is about that time where a player should start anticipating playing back-to-back -back games and maybe stringing along four or five at-bats throughout a ball game. Am I correct in thinking that? And, and do you feel like you're, it's about that time? Yeah, definitely. There, there's a uh, conditioning-wise, it's, it's, it's amazing how you can work so hard during the offseason, but, but being in baseball shape is completely different. And um, I, I feel like I'm starting to get there, and, and I'm, I know I'm definitely in, in a position to where I could play back-to-back -back days, and hopefully we'll, we'll start doing that soon. Danny Valencia leading off for the Orioles in the eighth. We're chatting with Nate McLeod, who uh, had three at-bats today in this game and drew a couple of walks, and uh, the walks there could be significant. Nate, because when you look at that and you look at, you know, trying to get the timing, the batting eye obviously is beginning to come back where you look over those close pitches. Yeah, and it's, you know, that's uh, it, the eyes there. And, and like I said, the, the swings kind of hit or miss some days. It feels better than others. And, and uh, um, it's just a matter of, of getting a good pitch and, and hitting it because I, I got a good pitch to hit today and I, I fouled it back. And those are ones that you like to think during the regular season you could you can put in play with some authority. Hey, and by the way, if there's a ball coming at me, let me know. Because <laughs> the wind's blowing out. <laughs> hey, hey, you're quicker than me. I'm sure you'll be able to get out of the way. Now, now, today in the game, you play in center field because your teammate, Adam Jones, will play tonight 
in the World Baseball Classic against the Dominican Republic. We hope the fans will tune in on MLB Network. What is it like for you to watch Adam playing so well in that tournament? Oh, it's great. And he's I've gotten a chance to watch a little bit of it. And I saw that hit he had against, uh, I can't remember who it was against, but it was a big hit. And he's looked good at the plate. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sure he's having a great time out there. It's fun to watch. Yeah, hey, uh, Nate, how about, are you excited to get out of this wind? It's, un it's unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, it, it's every single day, and I've already I've already had a circus on one ball the other day, and, and I'm, I'm good for one or two of those a spring. But it's, it is real. If you can play outfield here, you can play outfield anywhere. It's, it's tough. <laughs> You know, I, where, where are you? <laughs> you're telling us to look out for the ball. Oh, you're behind the bullpen. I'm That's behind why. the bullpen. Okay. Well, Nate, we appreciate the visit. Uh, keep go keep it going as it is, and uh, we're all looking forward to a big year, as I know you are. You were a big part of it last year, and it's uh, so great to have you back in uh, as an order. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. That's Nate McLeod, who uh, he was hiding out there. I didn't even see him. <laughs> so, uh, Nate McLeod, and, and again, you know, you don't, so, oh, yeah, I walked a couple of times, but it's about working on the batting eye and working on the, the pitches you take. Sure, I'll tell you what, from day one here in spring training, his focus was, was like no other out here as far as his approach in batting practice and, and just seeing pitches and watching his concentration. I mean, there was absolutely no, I mean, everybody comes to spring training and they're so excited. And, and every now and then they'll get out of their swing and maybe try to hit a ball 500 feet because the wind's blowing out. But he did not falter and has not faltered from his approach. Just great consistency and great focus from day one. Check swing. Trayvon Robinson gets the call. Trayvon's first at bat. He was in J.J. Hardy's spot in the lineup. One out, nobody on. We're tied 3-3 in the eighth. Josh Lukey on for his second inning. Only the third pitcher used by Tampa Bay in this game. One and two the count of Trayvon. Switch hitter batting left. Fastball called strike three. Robinson was ducking out of the way, if you will, and the pitch caught the corner. And two down. All right, this fastball here from Luki. Part of the play, probably just off inside. Ball not going in Robinson's favor. Here's Steve Pierce, his first at bat. Pierce last year played in the big leagues with the Orioles, Astros, and the Yankees, as well as in AAA. The Orioles certainly know the, the home run potential that Steve has. He's batting 429 in the camp. He has nine hits and 21 at bats. Only Lou Ford and Connor Jackson have more hits than Steve Pierce in the camp. And that matters for a guy like Steve who's trying to make the team. Sure does. Two and other count. Two outs. Base is empty. Can play first base. Strike called in the outside corner. Here's Buck Showalter looking for versatility with the bench players. Casilla can play second base and shortstop. Betemi plays third and first as well as DH. -y. And then question mark. <laughs> 2-1, hard hit right to the third baseman. Fontenot plays the hop. And he gets it across. And Luki has a second straight three up, three down inning. We're through eight in Sarasota, heading to the ninth, tied at three.
each team with five hits, each team with one home run. And no errors committed in this game. We'll head to the ninth inning. Dylan Bundy stays on for his third inning of work. Three up, three down, seventh. The two out walk, but no runs in the eighth. And now we'll work in the ninth and try to get this game to the bottom of the ninth tie. And he will face Will Myers. Now the top prospect. How about those numbers in the minors last year for Kansas City? 37 home runs, 109 RBIs, and he was the key player coming back to Tampa Bay in the James Shields trade. If Tampa didn't get Will Myers, Kansas City didn't get James Shields. Miles it back. Well, that first fastball from Dylan Bundy was a great spot down and away location. He just backed it up with another one, 92 miles an hour. We'll locate that fastball. This ball's ripped down the line and towards the corner. He got into that fastball. He'll hit the second of the leadoff double. Uh, Dylan did not locate that one. He, uh, Exposito wanted it off the plate away. He may have tried to overthrow it. Take a look at it here. You see Exposito setting down and away. And now watch his glove go up and in. Myers just ready for that mistake. Drives it down the left field line for a double. Now Myers just 22 years old. He's from Thomasville, North Carolina. He was a third round pick of Kansas City out of high school. So he's had four minor league seasons. There's Tim Beckham was in the number nine spot. A little bit down and in. Beckham in the big league camp. The Rays hope they're shortstop of the future. Foul Tippett's <laughs> like held on by Exposito. He lost his mask. Yeah, that was actually a great play by Exposito. That fastball taking off. A cut fastball just catching it in the webbing. Take a look at it here. Set up down and in and it just takes off up and away. And really saved uh, the pass ball. All the way back to the screen as Bundy overthrows, and that will allow Myers to get the third. Rays have to go ahead, run a third with nobody down in the ninth on that wild pitch. And that pitch comes up a little bit short here, held on to it a little bit too long. Surprise Exposito as well. Infield in the 2 1 pop foul out of play. Because Beckham not only the first round draft pick as Dylan Bundy was for the Orioles, but Tim Beckham was the first overall pick in the 2008 draft out of Griffin High School in Griffin, Georgia. And he is a year older than Will Myers. Beckham is 23. The 2 2 swing and a foul. Just got a piece. Nice change up right there by Dylan Bundy. Nice location down in the zone. So two and two. On Beckham infield still in. Breaking ball bounced in there, ball three. So he's behind. He's trying to make the perfect pitch, and he's bounced two pitches in this at bat. Oh, he used his mask on that. And a call from the third base umpire, Bill Welke. Called Showalter yelling at Bill Welke across the diamond. So the run scores. As Exposito tried to, it looked like, scoop that ball with his mask. And Tampa Bay has the lead. That was a strange play. 
Well, it was unfortunate play. And Exposito should know not to use his mask in that type of. And there's a base hit through the middle. One would have scored anyway as Beckham gets on. So Bundy a double and a single in the inning. In his first two innings, he had allowed only a two out walk, but now a double and a single. Well, here is Rick Adair out to chat with Dylan Bundy. He's also trying to find out exactly what happened. Luis Exposito back there. Settled Dylan down a little bit. So apparently what Bill Welke saw from third base and the home plate umpire right behind Exposito didn't see or call it was after the ball was smothered. He then took the mask off and covered the ball. Take a look at it right here. Great block. But he can't do that. That's a no no. And in his mind all he's doing is because well the guy's not going anywhere. I'm, I'm just going to help myself get the ball. All right. Welke obviously makes the call, but I think what Buck might have been so upset about is that it might have been just a little bit over animated in the way he made the call and just said, you know, instead of just pointing down saying he's awarded home. There's some frustration. I think Buck was off. Obviously upset that Exposito used his mask to make that play too. So just kind of vented it down now. Third base umpire. There's Chris Jimenez who is batting for a first time. He's in the leadoff spot. Pitch out as Jimenez showed bunt. And Tampa Bay with the lead now, 4 3 in the ninth. Yeah, to throw to first and just getting back is Beckham. Bundy showing a quick move. Breaking balls low. Two and another count on Jimenez. And the butt taken high, runner goes, throw to second, he is out. Real good throw on that high fastball by Exposito as the batter Jimenez bunted through it, missed it, and the caught stealing erases the base runner. Now this was a great throw. He does he has a cannon for an arm behind the plate. His mechanics is his feet under him. Strong throw right on the base. Nice tag by Flaherty. And three and one to count on the other Jimenez who will draw a walk. So Bundy's second walk. Now the base runner on with one down. Here's Robertson Chirinos, the catcher, batting for a first time. And there's a strike. And the Orioles will come to bat in the bottom of the ninth, down by a run at the moment. Another throw to first.
Swings through it. Fastball. Nothing at two on Robinson Chirinos. And Bundy gets it. And Chirinos down on strikes on the fastball. Two men down. That's the first strikeout for Dylan Bundy. A good pitch right here by Dylan. Got ahead 0 2 and made the perfect pitch just off the plate. Well, it gets the chase there. Of course, Myers, he was ahead 0 and 2 and unable to make the good pitch. That pitch that came back over the plate and led to that run. Jason Borges now. And a strike taken by Borges, his first at bat. Monday is the fifth Oriole pitcher in this game. A little bit low. It's his third inning of work. Strike taken by Borges, one and two. Kevin Gosman went two and two thirds, two runs. Mike Belfiore, one and a third, one run. Jim Johnson pitched a scoreless inning. Darren O'Day pitched a scoreless inning. And Dylan Bundy now one run in his two and two thirds innings. Or just the fifth batter here in the ninth for Tampa Bay. And Bundy keeping a close eye on Chris Jimenez over there at first base. And the 2 2 is hit right to Ishikawa at first. He's holding the bag. And the ball comes right to him. Tampa Bay gets the run to break the tie. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Always come up down by a run. Martin comes on in the ninth inning trying to close it out during the save last year pitching for Triple A Durham 21 starts in his 29 appearances and a pretty high ERA in the International League at 5.95. Yeah sure was but you know once again opportunities for these young pitchers to really show the staff of the Tampa Bay Rays what, what they have obviously you know they think highly of them bringing a big league camp and giving these opportunities to pitch here. So uh, they try to take advantage of those. They, you know, the big league staff might see one or two things that he can tweak, make adjustments on to make him better, you know, in AAA and lower those numbers and get more opportunities to pitch in the big leagues. So Martin will go to work. But on the Orioles, Birds need to run the tie. Travis Ishikawa. Will be the leadoff hitter. He is in Connor Jackson's spot in the lineup. Right. 
Ishikawa played in the game last night in Fort Myers against Minnesota and had a hit. Taken outside. Pushing the right hander, J.D. Martin. Taken for a strike. Travis batting 217 in the spring. Takes a strike on the outside corner again. He thought it was wide. Chicago's 5 out of 23 in the spring games. And breaking ball gets him. Good pitch. The Orioles leadoff man retired in the ninth inning. A couple good pitches here against the Chicago. Fastball is tailing away and then drops the curveball in the outer third. Great. Here's your Michael Navarro batting for a first time. He's in the number nine spot in the batting order. Takes inside 1 0. Navarro hitting at 263 in the spring. Five out of 19. Takes a pitch for a strike. All three Oriole runs came in on the three run home run by Matt Wieters in the fifth inning. Breaking ball bends in there again. So Martin coming in throwing strikes. Navarro high fly ball right center field. The ball has some carry over to it is Myers. He can't get it and it bounces over the fence for a double. Perfectly placed by Yamaika Navarro. He split the gap and Myers couldn't reach it. Tying run at second with one down. Yeah, Navarro really after a few tough pitches with some sliders stays on a fastball drives it to right center. Real nice approach right there with two strikes. Gets himself in a scoring position for the double. Luis Exposito now batting. It's his first at bat. He is in Brian Roberts' spot, the leadoff spot. Fouls back the breaking ball. J.D. Martin is 30 years old. He's been in pro ball since 2001. He has 24 major league games of experience, all that with the Nationals. He hasn't pitched in the big league since 2010. Last year, AAA the entire year for the Florida or Miami Marlins. Breaking balls low. One and one on Exposito with Michael Navarro at second base and one down. Orioles have had a flair for the dramatic late in spring training. Scored six runs in the ninth inning last night to win. Pitch taken for a strike at the knees. There have been a lot of disapproving looks from hitters today on called strikes. Go back to second, and it gets away and goes into center field. And Navarro will get to third. Now a fly ball could tie this game. Uh, pretty risky play, and I don't know if you'd see that happen during the regular season. You know, sometimes guys try to do too much here in spring training games just to see what pitchers and infielders are capable of doing. But really risky now. Like you said, we're at third base, sack fly, tie ball game. Infield drawn in. Tampa Bay wants to cut off this run. A ball and two strikes on Luis Exposito. 
Luis has had a real good spring at the plate. He is 8 for 19. And then taps it foul. And if he makes a mistake on the end of third, well, that's the danger zone. Rex Gazzito, he can hit a ball a long way. Count holding one and two. Inside, two and two. Mike Navarro doubled, went to third on the air. He's there with one down. Breaking balls high, ball three. Yeah, breaking ball's been an effective pitch. You can't blame him for throwing it. All right. Seems to be his best pitch, that little slider. 3 2 has popped up in the infield. Figueroa and Jimenez, and it's Jimenez who has it for the out and two men down. And the Royals are down to their final out. There has been a record set here today at Ed Smith Stadium. 8,796 is the attendance, and that is the largest crowd ever to watch a game here at Ed Smith Stadium. Broke the record set last year in a game against the Yankees when 8,686 came. Well, somehow they squeezed about 90 more people in here today and set a record. So congratulations to all the fans. Some have left as the game has gone on. And J.D. Martin is leaving as well. Joe Madden out for a pitching change with a runner at third and two men down. Tampa Bay one out away. They lead it 4-3. Kirby Yates comes on to try to get the final out. The Orioles down by a run. Have a runner at third and two down. You see last year, his numbers in double A. Look at those numbers. 50 games, 4-2 record, obviously. Nice low earned run average, but 68 innings, 94 strikeouts. So he's a power pitcher, just 39 walks, and that's why he's coming to try to close this game out for Tampa Bay. Non-drafted free agent out of Yavapai Junior College. There's Navarro at third representing the tying run. Russ Kanzler, his second at bat. He bounced out to lead off the seventh, pinch hitting for Nolan Reimold. A little bit low, 1 0. Spot for Kanzler here to show something. Always looking for a big two out hit. Swing and a miss. One on one. Kanzler, great swing. Just right through a 91 mile an hour fastball on the outer part of the plate. He is 26 years old.
Good take there, and it's inside two and one. He underwent Tommy John surgery as a collegian. And had to sit out all of 2007. The Rays signed him and he began his pro career in 09. Breaking balls high, ball three. Kanzler with a real patient at bat. To Michael Navarro, the tying run, he's at third with two men out. Three one is a called strike. Spun down on the outside corner. These relievers getting in the game trying to make the team. They love that slider. Oh, that's unbelievable how many off speed pitches we've seen today in hitters' counts. The game's changing for sure. And it's high ball four. So the at bat. One there by Kanzler. Very patiently works the walk. He's at first with two down. Two on with two outs. Tying run at third. Go ahead run and winning run is at first. And LJ Hose is coming to the plate. LJ took over in left field. He struck out his first at bat in the seventh inning. LJ 23 now. He turned 23 on March the 5th. Split last year between double A and triple A. And that's off the plate outside, 1 0. You know, and you wonder where LJ will begin this season. You know, he ended in triple A last year. In fact, he played 82 games there, so it was half the year. Yeah, if, uh, a bulk of the outfielders, you know, somebody's got to go to triple A. Exactly. There's a lot of outfielders in camp right now, so. A lot of decisions to be made uh, organizationally, not just in the big leagues. And LJ hit better in AAA statistically last year than AA. And I want to know the count. Outside, well outside, two and a half. And for LJ, I, mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. If you're in double A or triple A, you're still only a phone call away. But as far as the competition, though, I think LJ would much rather be in triple A. Even though he lives in Bowie, <laughs> you know, he'd be happy. He could, he could commute. Yeah, but just, you know, competition wise and confidence wise. And then again, ball three with a patient look. Yeah. You know, we talk about the competition and everything that, that's evolved in the last couple of spring trainings. So. And Buck notices each at bat too. Now here's a situation where Kanzler and LJ Hose could win the ball game with one swing of the bat, but they're showing their patience and not getting too amped up. They're having patient, patient at bats, waiting for their pitch. So uh, a couple quality at bats here. The three and one the count. If Hose gets on, Ryan Flaherty would bat next. Right call, Hose thought he had ball four. I'll take a look at this pitch right here. Might have been down. He hasn't been calling that down strike today. You saw the catcher move the glove, Robertson Chirinos. Hands lower go, three and two, two down. Chuck Sweeney fouled it off. It's a nice job of framing there by Chirinos, but he clearly moved his right. glove. Yeah, he sure did. Well, there were a lot of borderline calls earlier in the ball game that could have been straight straight at the bottom of the zone. And, uh, and Kevin Bowsman didn't benefit from any of those calls early. 3-2, swung on and missed. He got him. A breaking ball he couldn't catch up to. And the Rays hold on and win it. Orioles make it interesting in the ninth. A double. To third on an error and then a two-out walk. But Yates gets the save and Tampa Bay holds on and wins it. 
by the final of 4-3. We hope you can join us again on Sunday. More of those action from beautiful Sarasota as the O's will walk in the Minnesota Twins to town. Our coverage on Masson begins at 1 o'clock on Masson HD. And now for Mike Porter and our entire crew, Jim Hunter, so long from Ed Smith Stadium in Sarasota. Once again, our final score, Tampa Bay over the Orioles 4-3. Today's telecast has been a massive presentation as the Orioles and Rays battle it out. Tampa Bay wins it 4-3. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you back here on Sunday.